It's been 40 days and 40 nights since the Houston Cougar fans have been able to root on their football team here at Robertson Stadium. It's a Thursday night Conference USA matchup between the Blazers from Birmingham, Alabama and the Houston Cougars. And for the first time since August 30th here on their home field, the Houston Cougars. Blackburn with Aaron Taylor and I think if you gave a lot of college football fans a pop quiz said all right what player leads the nation in total offense per game you get answers like Chase Daniel or Sam Bradford the answer is Houston's Case Keenum well this Houston offense lives and dies with Case Keenum and he's such a talented quarterback he's the perfect mix of football IQ and physical talent when you watch him play his stats speak for himself but it's he's a very accurate passer especially on the short and medium pass and go hunting for some wild hogs. It's Keenum's leadership and command of this offense that makes Houston's one of the best in the country. Well, we know that Case Keenum's big in the Houston offense. Last two weeks for UAB, their offense has pretty much been Joe Webb. It's been Joe Webb, and they haven't played well, but despite that, they've done very good. Joe Webb is a very good quarterback. He can hurt you with his arm or through or with his legs on the ground when running. He's a very athletic and fluid runner. He's good in space and makes people miss, but his arm is going to get a lot better tonight with the return of sophomore Fran Trail Ford. The young sophomore had a high ankle sprain, hasn't played in the last two games, but he's back tonight and he has tremendous physical skills. Fran Trellforce is one of those receivers receivers. He's got a big body, soft hands, knows how to go up in air and grab the ball. And quarterback Joe Webb has a lot of confidence in his receiver, says, I know when I throw it up, Fran will go get it. Expect these two to hook up a lot tonight. Well, some of the key players in the game. Now let's check out the progressive keys to the game, beginning with UAB. Well, the Blazers' offense must attack Houston's heavy cover two defense. That means running quarter routes or switching up and running the football on obvious passing downs. UAB's defense must make plays on third down. The Blazers struggle to get off the field at times and finally feed the Vulcan. You've heard of the Wild Hog or the Wild Rebel. Well, the Blazers have the Vulcan. That's when running back Rashad Slaughter lines up at quarterback and Joe Webb actually goes out to split end. Very, very effective package for these guys. Looking at Houston, Keenum is a great playmaker, but he can't force plays. Sometimes he tries to do too much and it hurts him. And Houston's defense must neutralize the quarterback and wide receiver combination of Joe Webb and Franchise Forrest combined. They're 92 percent of this offense. And finally, the Cougars offense must protect the football. They played great versus ECU, but football is a simple game and four turnovers today will cost them the ball game. This is the seventh all-time meeting between the Blazers of UAB and the Cougars of the University of Houston. Last year at Legion Field in Birmingham, the Cougars won that matchup 49 to 10. In fact, they've won two out of the last three meetings against their Conference USA rivals. Houston will receive the kick. Patrick Edwards, who is averaging 160 all-purpose yards per game, will return the opening kickoff. Swayze Waters to kick it away for the UAB Blazers. Houston two and three on the season, but the last time that they played was a week ago Saturday when they went up to East Carolina and knocked off the East Carolina Pirates, knocking off a ranked opponent for the first time in 12 years. So there's some excitement here at Robertson Stadium about seeing this team that went and beat the ECU Pirates their last time out on the field. A Thursday night matchup between UAB and the Houston Cougars. Edwards feels it at the seven. Spinning out of a tackle. Edwards brought down at the 25. So we see the potent Houston offense take the field first. Led by quarterback Case Keenum. And he is the subject of our icy hot quarterback hot zone. Well, Carter. Keenan is so consistent. When you look at his numbers, being first in total offense at 419 yards per game, over 1,900 yards, 19 touchdowns with only five interceptions. This guy, if it weren't for the losses, you'd have to think that he would be a Heisman hopeful. 
And sure enough, six straight games with 300-plus yards passing. And the Cougars open up with an empty backfield. Keenum flinging it on first down to Mark Hafner, one of his favorite targets. The Houston offensive starters, the O-line has three seniors, including the right tackle, Sir Vincent Rogers, who's coming back from a major knee injury two years ago. Backs in receivers will see Bryce Bell, the true freshman, started running back. Already a pass catch from Mark Hafner, who is a big focus in this Houston offense, officially a tight end. Fumble of the football recovered by the Cougars. Johnson jumps on it. Well, we talked about making mistakes right out of the gate. You see the receiver coming over, and just the timing of the snap was missed. That Houston starts out with a mistake right out of the gate, not the way that the Cougar offense wants to start this ball game. Kier Johnson was the man in motion, and he ends up recovering the fumble. So that's third down and 12 now. Heavy pressure coming from the Blazers. Pass caught over the middle near a first down. Tim Monroe hauls it in. But about a yard shy of the first down. And that fumble already proves costly. Obviously, you complete that pass on third and short. It's an easy first down. Instead, Houston punting it away on the first possession. Yeah, that's... Some of the things you want to avoid, certainly you don't want to come out, but the good news is when you have a play that starts like that to start the game, a lot of times the nerves, a lot of times it's jitters. It gives the team a chance to come back, relax, regroup, and make no mistake about it, we're going to see this Houston offense shine tonight. Joe Webb out on the field now for the UAB offense. What stands out about the numbers for Joe Webb? Well, he's a tremendous playmaker with both his legs and his feet, and he does a tremendous job running the football. He averages over six yards a carry, so this Houston defense is going to have to keep an eye on him and not let him beat him with his feet. Blazers got off to a hot start last Thursday night when they played Memphis. It was a 10-0 start for UAB at the end of the first quarter. Ended up losing that game to Memphis. Blazers are 0-2 in conference, 1-5 on the year. Defense begins with a three and out. Slaughter takes the handoff on first down. As we check out the starters for the UAB Blazers, the offensive line, Jake Seitz starting his 31st consecutive game at center. The backs and receivers, Rashad Slaughter, Starts at running back. He had that first down carry. Big play threat, Frandrell Forrest. And were they back? Glad he's back at wide receiver. Yeah, Joe Webb's going to be looking forward to throwing his ball this way tonight. Second down and six. Webb looking long down the middle, wasting no time in finding Frantrell Forrest. <laughs> Look at that right out of the gate. That's one of the things that Frantrell Forrest does so well is use his speed and get in between the safeties. Just running a post route here, does a good job. Safety backs off one-on-one -on -one coverage, gets behind the linebacker, and very late, the Houston DB comes over way too late. They got to keep their eye on Frantrell Forrest. He's already proven to be a great addition to this offense. Okay. 38-yard pickup on the second down toss. Webb to Frantrell Forrest. Attacking that cover two defense early on. Langford, the tight end in motion. The handoff goes to Aaron Johns, who is wrapped up in the backfield by Matt Nicholson. That 4-3 Houston defense features rush in Philip Hunt, who has 24 and a half sacks in his Houston Cougar career. Freshman linebacker Matt Nicholson is second on the team in tackles with 34. A secondary that has been tested early, Kenneth Fontenet, the free safety, senior out of Pflugerville, third on the team with 30 tackles. You notice Joe Webb stepping back, getting a signal from the sidelines. They're looking to see what defense it is. They may keep the same player, they may change it. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense to stop that. Four wide, throwing on second down, it's caught by Rodell Carter, who makes just the sixth catch of his sophomore season. Houston plays a cover two in the 4-3 defense. How do you think Joe Webb is going to dial up his attack against that defense? Well, I think one of the things that Houston's going to have to really watch is Joe Webb's ability to make plays with his feet. They have to stay in their rush lanes and get upfield to get pressure on them, but not get so far upfield that he can get that good B bubble gap and make some yards on the ground. 
What's a B bubble gap? It's the, it's the gap between the uh, guard and the tackle. That pass is incomplete. The line judge says that's a forward pass and it's incomplete. Is this a forward pass? Awfully close, but looks like it is. I'd say that it was. It brings back hints of that old Houston Oilers, whether it was forward or whether it wasn't, but referees seem to make a good call on that. Brings up fourth down and a field goal for the Blazers. Swayze Waters will be attempting field goal from just outside the 40, so this is officially a 51-yard field goal attempt on the opening drive for UAB. Waters' kick is good and a 3-0 start for UAB. The big pass from Webb to Forrest sets up the field goal. And Swayze Waters, a yard shy of his career high, giving UAB a 3-0 start. Hey. Hey. Whew. Yeah. You look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Well, when I'm hurt and miss work, Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yep. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. It's a long season. There are Saturdays we steamroll our opponents. There are nights that'll make you cry. But it's worth every beat of sweat when you get the call to play in the bowl game. So for making our dreams become reality, we salute our bowl partners. From New Orleans to St. Petersburg, to Houston to Fort Worth, to Memphis to Mobile, this is Conference USA. Competition lives here. that you never know what you're capable of until you push yourself. I've discovered the strength to be a leader. I've discovered that learning can take you anywhere. UAB is a place to explore your talents and find your future. What can you achieve? Discover yourself at UAB. College football on CBS College Sports is brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light, endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And by the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. The Lyndon B. Johnson Space Flight Center. Mission Control for NASA. Officially, that is a 50-yard field goal from Swayze Waters at the end of that six-play, 49-yard scoring drive to give UAB a 3-0 start. Big play in that drive, the 38-yard pass from Joe Webb to Frantrell Forrest. Mr. Webb wastes no time in saying, welcome back, Frantrell. Seems like old Frantrell's ankle feeling pretty good. Those high ankle sprains are very, very painful. It's a little tissue in between the fib and the tib in your lower leg, the fibula and tibula, so it's a weight-bearing injury. Very painful when you run, but Frantrell Morris doing a great job on the first play of the game. Kenneth Fontenet returning that to the 20. After the kick from Swayze Waters, there's a flag on the play. Do you like my uh, explanation of that, Carter? Yeah. Medical school is on my future, buddy. Between the fib and tib, meaning fibula and tibula, correct? That's right. When you enunciate those words and say them fully. Cody, number 87 on the return to half a distance, first down. That's the call from David Epperly holding, so that backs the Cougars up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And already a couple gaffes by this Houston offense. 
the fumble which backed him up on the three and out opening drive and now a holding penalty on the return they get the football inside their own tent this offense is so powerful about the only thing that can stop them is when they shoot themselves in the foot and early on in this ball game Houston has not helped themselves they've got to shake that off and get into a rhythm here offensively Blazers show pressure up the middle on first down hand off to Bell well, speaking of the Houston offense hurting themselves, last time on the football field, even though they won this game in dominant fashion at East Carolina, Case Keenum with a fumble. Case Keenum throws the interception. And for good measure, another fumble from Case Keenum. And he said, absolutely, the lesson from that is, look, I, I need to be a playmaker, but I have to trust my teammates. I, I can't do it all myself. And he felt like that's where some of those turnovers came from against ECU. Throwing on second down, Hafner drops it. That could have been a touchdown, Carter. UAB brought the heat blitzing up the middle. Hafner did a good job of beating the coverage, but we see a very rare drop from the sure-handed receiver. That's what makes this Houston offense so good. They're, they strike quick, they like short and medium throws, and get tremendous yak yards, which is yards after the catch. Hafner missed a touchdown on that one. So third down and long for the second time for the Cougars. This is the second drive. They don't have a first down yet. Pressure again from the Blazers. Keenum gets rid of it. Caught on the sideline for a first down. It's Tyron Carrier, the redshirt freshman, who gets the first first down of the night for Houston. Tyron Carrier is not the biggest guy on the team. He's only five foot seven, 150 pounds, but he's got speed and he uses it on this play just to get outside of the receiver who had pretty good coverage, but great delivery by Keenum to put the ball on the spot. First down Cougars. Back to their 20. Remember they have the holding on the kick return. Johnson makes the grab. As we check out the UAB defense that Eric Schumann puts out there for three defense. Brian Turner, four sacks in his sophomore year from defensive end. Joe Henderson moves to middle linebacker tonight, flanked by the freshman, Luker and Ware. Chase Daniel, the strong safety who had 10 tackles last week versus Memphis. Second down and four. Keenum completes it again, and now Case Keenum's starting to heat up. A lot of times you'll see that with the offense. They relax, they slow down, they get into the rhythm, they get the jitters away. This is the first time they've played at home in 40 games, so maybe it's a little hard for them to be under normal circumstances. They had the hurricane, they had to switch different locations. Right now, Houston seems to be in a rhythm. Three straight completions from Case Keenum, mixing it up with the true freshman out of Tatum, Texas, Bryce Bell, who had 122 yards in that game against ECU. And you mentioned Kevin Sumlin's bring, Kevin Sumlin, the Houston head coach, brought this up not as an excuse. He says, it was just tough for us to get in the rhythm. They were supposed to play Air Force here at home, and then Hurricane Ike comes through, so they relocated to Dallas, played that game on a Saturday morning at SMU Stadium, Gerald J. Ford Stadium. Next two weeks, they were on the road. Finally getting back in a rhythm this past week. Case Keenum sails in long, just overshooting a wide open Patrick Edwards. Yeah, that was Brandon Carlisle on the cover. There was a miscommunication in that UAB backfield, but this is the second missed opportunity. It's a drop by Hafner and the overthrow there by Keenum. Houston's gonna watch this on film and realize they took another touchdown off the board. But you see that Brandon Carlisle Thought he had safety help over the top to be able to help on Patrick Edwards, but it wasn't there, but they dodged the bullet on that one. Third down and four with five wide receivers. Keenum looking for Hafner off his hands, incomplete. So that makes two Houston drives and two Cougar punts. Tell you what, this Blazer defense is coming to play, but it's primarily the miscues. This play is there. Keenum just slightly overthrows. Hafner does a great job of going up, but just off his fingertips. Got to give credit where credit is due. This Blazer defense, who hasn't historically, or historically done a good job on uh, third down, they're 102nd in the country, but they're showing up and playing tonight, Carter. Truth be told, they haven't done a great job on any down. Sanders dances out inside the 20. So the Blazer defense is for his punts on the first two series for Houston. Can the UAB offense take advantage?
Conference USA, home to talented student athletes from 12 great universities. Every year, the competition within CUSA gets tougher and the rivalries get more intense. Is this looking like a rivalry game now? This is our house, Conference USA. Rivalries live here. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. It's working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. Hotel reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. These terrorists realize that we're an easy target. A covert agent. Why'd you come to me? Will infiltrate the enemy. We need to get our own man inside their operation. Once he is in, you're blown. I know you work for the agency. There is no way out. Someone has betrayed me. Well, that was a fundamental tactical error, buddy. No! I thought Honey wanted to kill me. You're not safe here. Ah! I'm not safe anywhere. Body of Lies from director Ridley Scott, rated R. Hey, Honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. <laughs> it's working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. Hotel reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. They have vowed to bring a city to its knees and rule the streets once again. If somebody messes with me, I'm gonna mess with him. On this night, TNA Wrestling will become untouchable. Kurt Angle, Booker T, Christian Cage, Samoa Joe and the Icon Sting star in the most notorious pay-per-view of the year. TNA Wrestling presents Bound for Glory, live from Chicago, Sunday, October 12th on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Neil Calloway in his second season as UAB head coach. He's a former University of Houston assistant. He was an assistant here in the 1990s. Now Kevin Sumlin is the head coach here at the University of Houston in his first season as the Cougar head coach. He was at the University of Oklahoma the last five years, which means that for the first time in a long time, Kevin Sumlin's going to get to sit around and watch the Red River rivalry on Saturday between Texas and Oklahoma. He said, yeah, we'll be in here breaking down game film on one screen, watching the Sooners play Texas on the other. Webb throwing on first and ten, completing to Justin Johnson for just the fourth catch of his sophomore season. And now let's take a look at the Bud Light stat six pack. The first five numbers are season total so far for UAB in Houston. And then we'll take a look at the total yards so far in this game. Another solid start in this game for UAB with a, a three nothing lead on Houston. And that's kind of been the history for the Blazers so far in 08, even though this is a one and five team. 0-2 in conference, they've been starting well, just haven't been finishing well. Yeah, that's one of the things Coach Callaway talked about was putting a full 60 minutes together. Now we see Joe Webb up the middle hurting you with his feet, which is what he does. That is one of the best things that Joe Webb does is when it's covered, he can tuck it and go. Great job right here, receives a snap, sees it there, calls his own number, tucks it down. The offensive line does a good job of keeping a hat on the hat, but Joe Webb is a dual threat quarterback. He has over six yards per carry. Puts a lot of pressure on that defense, Carter. What are you gonna do? You're gonna drop your safeties and defend the pass or bring him up and keep your eye on Joe Webb? You mentioned earlier the Houston defense, the base is the cover two, so two deep safeties. That can create some running room, not only for Joe Webb and for the backs like Johns who Webb makes it to that time and keeps it himself. Very good defense or discipline by the Houston defense on that play. Didn't matter where your safeties were. The Cougars brought it on that one. Asked Joe Webb earlier this week, all right, you play quarterback, but you're also the team's leading rusher. You played wide receiver last year. Is it difficult playing the different positions or are you just playing ball? He said, no, playing ball. Give, give the football in my hands and let me make plays. The greatest players, and I played with one of those, are Brett Favre. They want the ball in their hands when it matters, and Joe Webb is one of those type of players. On second down and nine, he has room to run on the outside if he wants it. Shoved out, and a nice job of closing down the lanes on the outside by the Cougars. Flag on the play. Houston's defense, no stranger to bringing the heat. They do a very good job rushing the passer. 
They've got, of course, a lot of turnovers. They have eight sacks on the year. But again, one of the things you have to do. Clipping. Offense, number 28. 15 yards. Second down. Costly penalty, Aaron Johns. A running back called for the clip. Aaron Johns just running, hustling, get downfield. You have to get your head in front of the player's knee. Had he done that, it would have been a non-penalty. You see right there, his head behind the knee. The reason they call that is you saw it right there. It's a very dangerous for the player that's getting cut. That was Marcus McGraw, who was the victim of that clip by Aaron Johns. So the Blazers backed up, second down and long. Slaughter shoved out as the Cougar defense runs down the line with Rashad Slaughter. Rashad Slaughter and Aaron Johns have very different rushing styles. Rashad Slaughter is very quick. He's got a good burst and lateral quickness. They like to run him on the outside. They will hit him up inside on zones, but they like to get Slaughter the ball on the outside and even throw it to him every once in a while. Even line him up at quarterback in that Vulcan package you referred to in the progressive keys of the game. This is third down and 21 for the Blazers. Webb fakes the run. Cougars were sitting on it, so Lubajowski, the middle linebacker, comes up to knock Joe Webb to the turf. Well, Lubajowski made the tackle, but make no mistake about it, it was number 53, Philip Hunt, who does a good job of coming through the slant. Just misses the sack right there at the end. Joe Webb does a good job showing you his elusiveness, getting up out of there. But Philip Hunt is a great pass rusher. Expect to see more from this great defensive end the rest of the night. Swayze Waters will punt it away. Kenneth Fontenet back to return it for the Cougars. Calling for the fair catch at the 25. He fumbles the football. UAB recovers inside the Houston 20. A huge special teams mistake for Houston. You see, when he's fielding the ball, he's taking his eyes off looking down. He almost looks a little nervous. I think he feels the heat. You see the defenders all around him just takes his focus off the football. That's one of the hardest things to do when the ball's kicked high in the air is to keep your eyes on it, especially when you have people breathing fire coming down to knock your head off. So Fontenet fumbles the punt return, giving UAB the football in the Houston red zone, and he stays on the field. He's the free safety. So he has to shake it off in a hurry. Webb looks his direction, flings it over the middle. Intercepted. The Cougars get it right back. Matt Nicholson doing an incredible job of making a play. UAB tried to strike quickly after the turnover, which I applaud, but Joe Webb forces this football, puts a little too much air underneath it, throws it into triple coverage. You see the ball bouncing around there, and Matt Nicholson has the wherewithal to snatch it. The ball never hits the ground. Nicholson, a beast in the weight room, is the leading tackler on this team and comes up with a huge play there. Ernest Miller bats it, Nicholson picks it off. Cougars get it back. Geico sponsors Mike's race car because they ensure everything race car fans love. RVs, motorcycles, ATVs. I'll tell you one thing they can ensure. Lauren Wallace. Because Lauren Wallace is made of lightning. Those guys are like, hey, where's Lauren? He was just here a minute ago. I'm 100 miles away, son. Ready to strike. Geico. Saving you money on insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. These are the faces that look up to you. You. The fans, the people who pack the stands week after week. So before you walk through the stadium gates or see the first fan from the other team, ask yourself one question. Are you setting a good example for the next generation? Make sportsmanship your best play of the game and make it a great day for NCAA football. This is Conference USA. Home to talented student athletes from 12 great universities. 
Every year, the competition within these walls gets tougher. The rivalries get more intense. It pushes these young men and women to become smarter athletes and stronger students. Pride and respect run deep in our house. Welcome to Conference USA. Competition lives here. Right after the fumbled punt, by Houston, next play, Joe Webb going to the end zone, batted by Ernest Miller, and Matt Nicholson slides in for his first career interception. The junior out of Plano, Texas, and uh, when we asked Philip Hunt about who was coming on in the defense, the first guy that he mentioned was Matt Nicholson, saying he has really become a playmaker in his junior year, first year starting. And he swoops in to steal that one right away from the tight end, Jeffrey Anderson. See, in case Keenum moved to the top of your screen. This is Blake Joseph on the direct snap. He is dragged down. Flag coming in. You'll see Houston do that from time to time, and they try and cause some confusion on the defense, but UAB starting to self-destruct here with the turnovers and now a penalty. Personal foul. Fourth down to tackle, 96 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Elliot Hennigan whistled for the flag. The horse collar penalty was a point of emphasis this year for the referees, and the ruling is you have to bring a player immediately down. If you had run a couple yards and dragged them down eventually, they don't call that, but it's when the player is immediately brought down that they throw the flag. Good call by the refs on that one. It used to be the inside of the shoulder pads. That was the horse collar rule. Now it's pretty much anywhere around the shoulder pads. First down, Case Keenum pumps, looks for his underneath man, Patrick Edwards. Patrick Edwards, another one of his favorite targets. In fact, it's his favorite target. He's a leading receiver on this team. Not a very big guy, but very, very fast. They'll take some shots deep with Patrick Edwards. Bell gets the handoff on first down, trying to turn the corner, shoved out after about a three yard gain. Well, I'm going to hit you with a uh, little-known fact with my first Cliff Clavin that Bell's first cousin was Larry Sinners, the great back for the Houston Cardinals, but he's coming off his career-best game last week, or a couple weeks ago, versus ECU with 132 yards and two touchdowns. Very good for a freshman receiver. It takes a while to get the thing going, but once you figure it out, Bell's going to be a very good back for some time to come for the Cougar offense. He is lined up behind Case Keenum on second down. Bell will get the handoff. Breaking a tackle. Can't slip away from Chase Daniel. Oh, Cliff Clavin, you're right back, saying that Larry Sinners was a lumberjack in his college playing days at Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches, Texas. Third down and short. Bell wrapped up and dropped by Joe Henderson. Play before, it was Chase Daniel making the tackle. Yes, Chase Daniel, just like the Missouri quarterback and Heisman hopeful Chase Daniel. So here's a little tale of the tape between Chase and Chase. The only time that you should see an S by Chase Daniel. Well, you, Chase Daniel's known for what he does for Missouri's offense. And Chase Daniel here is known for coming up and making great plays on defense and also for helmet hair. Did you get a load of that thing? <laughs> Fourth down and three. Cougars going for it. Keenum flushed out of the pocket. Keenum rolling, looking for Hafner. Now he's going to cut it back. Keenum firing it downfield. Caught well short of the first down. Well, it was fun while it lasted, but it ends up in UAB football anyway. You get the feeling that these guys have fun out there. It's fun to watch that sort of thing. Case Keenum is a playmaker, but that's one of the things he said is sometimes he tries too hard and forces a play there, but that's also what makes him so special. It's a double-edged sword when you have a quarterback that can make plays and not make bad decisions, but right there, you got to take your hat off to him. They found a way to complete the football, but in the end, it's a turnover on downs. So now the UAB offense gets the football back, a 3-0 lead for the Blazers. Let's go take him out, yeah? Yeah. We got business to handle. Hey, can I can I get a Whopper Jr., please? This is, this is not Burger King. That's a Burger King. Sorry. 
Can I get some flame broiled beef, please? Got any of that? Uh, okay, thank you. Do you want a sour cream and chocolate potato? A baked potato? A baked potato? Are we in Russia? Whopper Jr. and spicy chicken crisp for a buck each. Taking down other value menus. Tell Wendy Whopper Jr. is looking for, okay? I. Three nothing UAB on Houston. This was at least an entertaining fourth down try by the Cougars. Well, keep your eye on the defensive backs. They are like a glove on the Houston receivers. There's nowhere to throw. Good protection up front, but Keenum has to run around and try and make plays, and that's hustling. You see safeties running around, the Blazers flying around. We talked about it at the beginning of the game. One of the things that this UAB defense had to do was play well on third and fourth down, and so far, Houston's only one for four. The Blazers have the edge there. Motion on the line, but the Blazers don't snap it yet. Remember, the last UAB possession was the one that lasted one play. When Joe Webb went to the end zone, the pass was intercepted. Slaughter goes in motion. Slaughter takes the handoff, looking for the cutback. Picks up about three yards on the first down carry. It's a good job of defensive line scraping across and getting off their blocks. Number 38, Jake Ebner, does a good job of beating his pass pressure. But Tyler Graham also in on the tackle. This UH defensive front is very active and getting better by the game. Second down and seven, the screen to Slaughter. Runs right around Marcus McGraw, the true freshman linebacker who was sitting on the screen, but Slaughter gets around him anyway. Open field tackling is so important on both levels, whether it's college football or professional football. You see the young McGraw make a mistake there, not being able to tackle the football, given a third and short to this Blazer offense. They're down at about half a yard, so why not sneak it with your leading rusher, who just happens to be your quarterback, Joe Webb. And remember last week, last Thursday, he was a game-time decision. We didn't really think we were going to see Joe Webb in the game that we saw him play against Memphis. But he warmed up. The hip flexors seemed to be treating him all right, so he played anyway. Played well against the Tigers. Yeah, he came in and did a great job with his athletic ability, and it shows you just how good of a player he is. But he did have a couple miscues on fumbling the ball, and a lot of times that happens with a player doesn't have physical contact during practice, and I think it reared its ugly head and helped cost him the ball game last week. Blazers take a timeout. Houston defense having a, their hands full also offensively. When you have such a good mobile quarterback that can hurt you both ways, it's very hard to be able to do. When you look at Houston's defense, they put a lot of pressure, but thus far, they're coming up and making plays and knocking Slaughter down and keeping an eye on Joe Webb. He's yet to be able to hurt them terribly with the speed. He had one run, but then they come up with a big turnover. Right now, it's kind of back and forth with which defense is going to make plays. And in a game that I thought was going to be offensive, right now, defense is having its way, and both of them playing very well. Yeah, the number's not great on the season for Houston defensively, but... You factor in that they had a game that gave up 699 yards of offense to Oklahoma State. Now, the Cowboys obviously have a pretty good offense, but when you give up 699, that's going to skew your season numbers for the rest of the year. Maybe it should. Webb running on first down, and he sprints ahead for an 11-yard pickup. Aaron Johns throwing the lead block. That's that read option give that they love off to the right side. It's a called run where the quarterback just goes and it's lead by Aaron Johns doing a good job but Joe Webb explosive they will try and get Joe Webb the ball in his hands to make plays with his feet both on called runs to the outside with the zone and also when plays break down on third down Webb tucks it and runs again on first down right through the middle of the Cougar defense he slips right past Cody Lubajowski, the middle linebacker, and picks up another first down. So that's back-to-back 10-plus -back yard gains by Joe Webb. Well, Carter, this is what the 4-3 does for you. There's that B bubble gap we talked about between the guard and tackle where Joe Webb does a good job. Houston rushed four on that play. They had nobody that was spying or a searchlight. That means basically man-on-man -man or man-to-man -man protection on the quarterback on that play. 
and Webb made him pay for it. 44 rushing yards in the first quarter for Joe Webb, setting things up for Rashad Slaughter. Eight-yard pickup on first down, and the Houston defense is getting run on right now. Right now, the Blazer offensive line doing a good job of blocking those guys and creating some running lanes. They'll run Slaughter inside. He's a speedy back, but that big offensive line that outweighs the Houston line by about 20 or 30 pounds having their way up front. Call it second down and three. Play fake to Slaughter, dump it to the tight end, Zach Langford for a first down inside the 10. Well, we told you Joe Webb is pretty much the Blazer offense. Sure enough, 104 yards for Joe Webb. The rest of the offense, 113. Now, the rest of the offense, I mean, that, that includes like Frantrell Forrest catching the 38-yarder from Joe Webb. <laughs> There's no question that he's an integral part of this offense. And as Joe Webb goes, this Blazer offense goes, which is why it's so important. Houston's going to have to find a way to nullify him and take him out of the game. We talked about it at the beginning. And right now, Houston's defense doesn't have an answer. It's a field goal game at the end of the first quarter. Swayze Waters, 51-yard field goal is the difference so far. Now can the Blazers capitalize on another red zone opportunity at the beginning of the second? Hey man, what kind of light beer do you want? Whatever, they all taste the same. Hold on, they all taste the same? Does bath water taste the same as spring water? Does a carrot stick taste the same as a stick? Stick. Does ground beef taste the same as beef on the ground? Bottom line, there is a difference. And Bud Light has it. It's called drinkability. That just right taste, not too heavy, not too light. Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. Switch your old dandruff shampoo to one that's clearly different. New Selsum Blue Naturals. Clearly stops flakes and itch. So soft. Clearly gentle with vitamins and botanicals. New Selsum Blue Naturals. The difference is clear. UAB leads it three to nothing at the start of the second quarter, but a golden opportunity here at the beginning of quarter number two for the Blazers. They have it inside the Houston 10. Red zone is where they had the miscue last time. They have to find a way to either get it in the end zone or not turn the ball over, but a great opportunity for the Blazer offense as they look to the sideline and get a play change. Let's see what they come up here on first down. Rantrell Forrest is not on the field. The first down keeper from Webb looked like he was running the option with Rashad Slaughter. Keeps it on first down, gets inside the three. Maybe about the two and a half is where this will be spotted. Not a whole lot there. Houston's defense up front holding up pretty good. Down in the red zone, teams like to throw to the tight end, so keep your eye on Zach Langford who's already got a touchdown on the year. Webb looking for room on the left end, into the end zone, touchdown, Joe Webb. Well, I was a little ahead of myself. I said, keep your eye on Zach Langford, number 84. He's actually the one that was the lead blocker on this, does a good job for Joe Webb. Great job at the point of attack. Houston over pursues. Webb sees it with his great visions, able to cut on a dime, get north and south and into the end zone. Joe Webb can smell the end zone, and he's very good down low. For the 13th time this season, Joe Webb into the end zone, the sixth rushing touchdown for the junior out of Birmingham. In just 37 seconds into the second, it's 10-0 UAB. Look at how well these lifting straps work for carrying furniture, appliances, and mattresses. Dollies can damage floors, hand trucks beat up stairs, and don't tug. Mattresses get ruined. You can pick items up by hand, but you have to bend down. These adjustable straps carry items inches off the floor to avoid lifting high. Dollies get stuck in thresholds. These straps lift right over door sills. And not only do they encourage proper lifting techniques, but they also employ leverage, making the pieces you carry feel lighter. Medically speaking, I would use the forearm forklift because I think it's a safe device. I would prefer my husband to lift furnishings with the forearm forklift instead of by hand because I want him to protect his back. When we were moving in, 
We had this huge entertainment center. We had it down the stairs and in the truck in no time. Each order comes with two straps, instructions, and these grip gloves. It's worth ordering now. Here's how easy it is to use these adjustable lifting straps. Put the straps underneath the item you're about to carry. Cross them, bend with your knees, insert your arms into the desired strap loops, place your hands flat in front of you, and lift. I love the fact that I can use my forearm forklift to move furniture around to steam clean my carpets in areas that I haven't gotten to. Your forearms are a fulcrum of support. These adjustable straps use that fulcrum to your full lifting advantage. In fact, your forearms safely support much more weight than your fingers, which leaves your hands free to stabilize and maneuver the load. As a builder, uh, moving things like bathtubs or drywall, I can't think of uh, anything that would be easier and more convenient to use, and I think it'd last a long time. Order now. We'll include this extension for free. It allows you to add three and a half feet to your pair so that you can even carry furnishings as big as this. Buy the best moving tool ever. Call for this amazing offer in the next 10 minutes. Now through this special TV offer, you can get the forearm forklift for only $19.95. This amazing offer includes two forearm forklift straps, extension, and grip gloves, all for one low price. Call 800-569-4986 while supplies last. Call 800-569-4986 now. In the Space City, Houston, Texas, the nation's fourth largest city. It's a 10-0 UAB lead. You can watch live games online featuring big-time teams with CBS College Sports XXL. Log on this weekend as some of the best teams in college football compete. Get more action at cbssports.com slash XXL. There are the X's and O's for the Houston defense as they try and figure out what went wrong. On that UAB touchdown drive, Aaron will be showing us exactly what went wrong on the touchdown run here in a moment. Well, I got these crayons. I might as well draw. Got your big chief tablet. <laughs> crayons, pencil sharpeners. The erasers that tear the paper. <laughs> Johnson with the big return for the Cougars. Wrestled down at the 31. Now let's go back to the three-yard touchdown run from Webb. Well, I'd mentioned Zach Langford. Look at him down here at the bottom of your screen. He's going to go in motion and bring the Houston defense over, which over-pursues. They want to punch it up inside, but Joe Webb cuts with the over-pursuing defense and is able to get it north-south and get the precious yards to get inside. You see defensive line coach Jim Jeffco going over the Houston defense. He is not happy. Woo! Boy, 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 boy. I remember those days. Do you think Jim Jeffcoat is pleased with his defensive line's effort? That is tipped and almost picked off. It's incomplete. Let's go. You hear Jeffco not happy with what's going on. Houston quarterback, though, Case Keenum dropping back. Not a whole lot there. Some pressure comes up the middle, and these are the miscues. Houston has to do a good job of protecting. Blazers up front. Their defensive line is able to get pressure, and right now out playing the Cougars. Be a bad time to be a Houston defensive lineman right now. Second down and 10. Keenum plenty of time to throw and throws it behind Bryce Bell, who's coming out of the backfield. Left it way behind the intended target. Right now, not much going well for Houston. This is their first time back, as we mentioned, in 40 days and 40 nights. But right now, it seems like they must have been sleeping because this is not the characteristic offense we're seeing from the Cougars. They have to find a way to get something going offensively and just relax and play football. Getting behind schedule, as it's known, getting into third down and long. They're one of four on third down, make it one of five. And that was nearly picked off. Matt Taylor had both hands on the football. And the reason he did was because number 31, Chase Daniel, Mr. Helmet Hair himself, doing a good job of coming up the middle and pressuring the quarterback. Houston's offensive line, which is pretty good, not doing a good job right now protecting the passer, and it's costing this Houston offense some miscues. Chase Turner punts it away. Sanders grabs it and has a chance for a return. Kevin Sanders dragged down. Nice special teams play from Ernest Miller, the starting strong safety. So a 10-0 UAB lead, drawing the ire of Jim Jeffco.
Want to see more ACC action? With the new ACC Select Service presented by Raycom Sports and CBS College Sports, you're just a click away. Watch your favorite sports live on your computer or catch all the action later with on-demand viewing. See exclusive features highlighting your favorite ACC teams and student athletes. Visit the ACC.com or your favorite ACC school's official athletic website for more information. A big arms, a rip chest, and cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. Now with free shipping. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of the push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. Call right now, and you get free shipping. Get big fast. Call now for the perfect push-up. Okay, give me my remote. Get it, Jim. You had way too much cable. Uh, you said you were going to get direct TV. I'm fine. Really? So digital picture doesn't mean anything to you? But what about your friends and your family? I just want to watch the game. That's the cable talking, Jim. That game isn't even in HD. Friends don't let friends watch cable. Refer a friend or family <laughs> member to direct TV, and you'll get $50, and they'll get $50 on top of our best offer. University of Houston team, which is 1-0 in conference play, which is the mantra. They were a disappointing start to the season. They won the opener against Southern University, which is a Division I AA, or championship subdivision team, if you will. So That's the win over East Carolina, the only Division I A win Houston has, and yet it counts for conference game. They're 1-0 in conference. Hand off on the end around. Goes to Mark Farrell. And the ground game continues to produce for UAB. Houston defense last in the conference USA in rushing, giving up over 213 yards per game. And right now, UAB is well into that, and we're only in the second quarter. They've got to find a way to stop the run of the Blazer offense. 77 rushing yards now for the Blazers. Setting up the pass, Fran Trill Forrest again. You told us in the keys those web to Fran Trill Forrest plays are going to be big for the Blazers. They like to get him the ball in his hands quick and see what he can do after it. And I got to do it. Just get it out of the way. Run, Forrest, run. I'm glad you got it in. So Fran Trill Forrest missed the last couple of weeks with a high ankle sprain has some chance now to go out and make plays with Joe Webb. Pressure coming on Joe Webb. Slips out of the blitz. He just tucks it and runs for another UAB first down. Over 50 rushing yards in this game now for Joseph Webb. He does a great job of making plays with his feet, whether it's called runs like on this, making people miss in the open field, or on busted pass plays where he can scramble. Houston has to find a way to be able to stop him, because Joe Webb, you see the vision that he punches it up there on the touchdown with. He's such an impressive athlete. They've got to do something, a searchlight, a spy, do something. They brought the heat on that last play, and they're paying for it, so they've got to come up with another answer besides pressuring Joe Webb if they hope to stop him. 61 rushing yards on just 10 carries, over six yards a carry for Joe Webb. Why not tuck it and run again? That's a short run for Joe, it's eight yards. Coming up later in the game, we will have the Home Depot tools for success. Well, there's no question that right now the Home Depot tools for success is Joe Webb and his ability to make his feet, but there's been some other things that are happening tonight, but right now it's the UAB running game and what they're doing that is so effective for this Blazer offense that are on the door of the red zone again. 
They'll snap this one from just outside the 20 yard line. Two red zone trips, one touchdown for UAB. Officially inside the 20, it will be another UAB first down. Houston defensively has no answer for Joe Webb running the football. And I think that's why we saw Jim Jeffcoat being so um, expressive, we'll call it, about what's going on up front. Nobody, whether it's the linebackers or the defensive line, they're going to have to put somebody in man-to-man -man coverage with him and lose a safety, which is going to put some pressure on their outside guys. But that's one of the ways that you can take a very elusive quarterback out of the football game. First and goal for the Blazers, but first a flag. Plus start. Offense, number 68. Five yards, first step. The Houston Cougars are fourth in the nation in yards per game, and yet look at who's dominating the yards in this football game, UAB. And they're doing it on the ground. They're doing a great job, and part of that is because of the offensive line. And what's so impressive, Carter, is that these guys are banged up, man. They've got backup people playing two or three different positions. One starter goes down in this game. They're going to have trouble on both sides of the ball. But these Blazers are finding a way to be productive. First and goal. Webb dumps it short and incomplete. Intended for Mario Wright off the play action. Yeah, we were talking with offensive coordinator Kim Helton earlier this week. He said, yeah, well, Bulls didn't practice, but he's going to play. Thompson didn't practice this week. He's going to play. And down the line of the UAB offensive line, I get the impression they had about two healthy guys available for practice this week in Birmingham. <laughs> but you got to love the Kim Helton and what he's doing with this offense. They've got to be very happy with the production. They're playing with a motley crew out there, and that's what I love about this game. The heart and the determination, as well as the execution on the ground by Joe Webb, is what's carrying the Blazers. Second and goal from the 14. Roll out for Webb. He looks to cut it back. Now the Cougars swarm. Webb still picks up a yard, but they had it bottled up that time. This is one of the things they're doing. You see a couple of the linebackers shooting through and running and taking away the cutback. That's what hurt them on the touchdown, but missed tackles. Joe Webb has a phenomenal ability to make the first guy miss and break arm tackles. Houston is going to have to swarm to the football to keep him in check. Big play here, third and goal. Ball spotted at the 12. The draw on third down and goal from the 12. Webb gets to the five, and that's it. How about the QB draw on third down and goal from the 12? I'll see your QB draw and raise you. How about a lead draw with Rashad Slaughter? All 185 pounds and five foot nine of them going one on one on uh, the linebacker Philip Hunt, actually the defensive end. Right now, UAB is doing a great job up front running the football and about to put some more points on the board, or at least have the opportunity to. 23 yard field goal attempt coming from Swayze Waters who had a 50-yarder in the first quarter. That one's through, and it's 13 to nothing UAB on Houston. Over five minutes into the second quarter, the team that's 0-2 in CUSA play, a 13 to nothing lead. Let's go take him out, yeah? Yeah. We got business to handle. Hey, can I, can I get a Whopper Junior, please? This is, this is not the issue. Sorry. Can I get some flame broiled beef, please? Got any of that? Uh, we don't do that here. Do you want a sour cream and chocolate potato? A baked potato? A baked potato? Are we in Russia? Whopper Jr. and spicy chicken crisp for a buck each. Taking down other value menus. Tell Wendy Whopper Jr. is looking for, okay? I. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat, the RV. Sham Wow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? It doesn't trip. 
doesn't make a mess, bring it out. You wash it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. You can cut it in half. Use one as a bath mat, drain your dishes with the other one. Use one as a towel. Olympic divers, they use it as a towel. Look at that, completely dry. Put a wet sweater, roll it up, it dries your sweaters. Here's some cola. Wine, coffee, cola, pet stains. Not only is the damage gonna be on top. There's your mildew. That is gonna smell, see that? The most of, we're gonna do this in real time. Look at this, put on the spill, turn it over. Without even putting any pressure, 50% of the cola right there. You follow me, camera guy? The other 50%, the color starts to come up. No other towel is gonna do that. It acts like a vacuum, and look at this, virtually dry on the bottom. See what I'm telling you? Sham wow, you'll be saying wow every time. I can't live without it. I just love it. Oh my gosh, I don't even buy paper towels anymore. If you're gonna wash your cars or any kind of vehicle, You'd be out of your mind not to own one of these. All I can say is, Sham, wow. You're going to spend $20 every month on paper towels anyway. You're throwing your money away. The mini Sham Wows are for everything, for everyday use. This lasts 10 years. This lasts a week. I don't know, it sells itself. The Sham Wow sells for $19.95, but you get one for the house, one for the car, two for the kitchen and bathroom. But if you call now, within the next 20 minutes, because we can't do this all day, we'll give you a second set absolutely free. So that's eight sham wows for $19.95. Comes with a 10-year warranty. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-678-8344. That's 1-800-678-8344. ShamWow is not available in stores and is made in Germany. Beware of ShamWow imitators. Call 1-800-678-8344. That's 1-800-678-8344. Call now. Second field goal of the night for the senior from Jackson, Mississippi, Swayze Waters. This one a little bit easier than the 50-yarder he got in the first quarter. 23-yard field goal to make it 13-0 UAB over Houston. So good start for the Blazers, but now the question is, how does UAB capitalize on this hot start? Well, the Blazers are known this year for having quick starts. I mean, you got to remember in the first game, they were up 22 to 21 versus Tulsa, and that high-powered offense but got blanked in the second half where Tulsa came back and scored 24 unanswered points. And last week, they had 331 yards at halftime, but only came out and had 134 in the second half and ended up losing to Memphis. So as good as UAB looks right now, Houston has to stay in this ball game because the Blazers have shown a propensity so far this year to fall apart in the second half. So the 13 nothing start, remember last week against Memphis, it was a 10 nothing start for UAB on Memphis. Tigers came back and won that Thursday night game on field goal. Joseph lined up at quarterback. Keenum splits out wide on first down. Blake Joseph on the keeper. Running off a left tackle. Aflac. That means it's time for the Aflac trivia question. Who holds the record for most passing yards in a single game? Division 1A record for most passing yards in a single game. And, of course, we are here at the University of Houston, so maybe that should inform your answer. Keenum dumping it to his tight end, Mark Hafner, who picks up the first down. Hafner's nickname is Muscles. I talked to strength coach Larry Jackson at the beginning of the game. They said Hafner's a beast in the locker room. He'll get treatment five or six times a day. Even when he's supposed to not practice, he won't not practice. He loves to be on the field. He loves to lift weights, and he's a beast, and he's a very good and very integral part of this Houston offense. Second catch of the game for Hafner, who's averaging Seven catches a game. Keenum throws a nice play. Coming over the top, B.J. Steed, the junior out of Sioux City, Iowa. Blazers defense is kind of linebacker by committee. We were talking to Eric Schumann, the defensive coordinator of the Blazers, before the game earlier this week, and he said, I have no idea who's going to start the middle linebacker for me. Houston quick snaps it on second down. Blazer defense ready again. Give credit to UAB's defense through the first quarter plus of this ball game. They have bottled up this supposedly potent Houston attack. And what's so impressive, Carter, is we're looking at guys that aren't world beaters. They're 113th in total defense. They're hurt. They have a lot of inexperience and freshman playing. And right now, they are handing Houston their lunch. Keenum on third and long. Sacked. 
back at the 38. And Houston is now one of six on third down tonight. Anthony Barnes gets to him. Well, Houston's offensive line, which has done a good job so far this year with sacks. You watch the left guard here. There's pressure up inside. They're running stunts, and they're seepage. There's not a good job of exchanging between the left guard and left tackle. And one of the ways UAB is trying to get to the quarterback is by putting pressure and running stunts and using quickness because of their undersized, and it's working perfectly. Playing games, they call it up front. Kevin Sublin. And the Cougars down by 13. Get big arms, a rip chest, and cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. Now with free shipping. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of the push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. Call right now, and you get free shipping. Get big fast. Call now for the perfect push-up. Unstoppable, be stopped. Kelly Pavlik, an unstoppable runaway train, crushing anyone in his path. Pavlik has a huge knockout. Bernard Hopkins, the iron-willed warrior who's never been knocked out. Perfect right hand by Hopkins. Can the undeterred legend derail the Pavlik Express? This is boxing. Pavlik versus Hopkins. Saturday, October 18th. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View Channel 123. That's Houston offensive line coach Joe Gilbert. What's he drawing, Aaron? He's drawing the stunts. You see the in and the tackle slant and the tackle coming around. You have to have good pad level and bump and pass that off. Right now, Houston's offensive line not doing a good job of doing simple, basic one-on-one -on -one football things, which is sliding to the guy and, and passing off the stunts. Offensive coordinator Dana Holgerson coming over to give his, his two cents to the offensive line along with Offensive line coach Joe Gilbert. That's easily correctable, though. That's a physical mistake and not having your feet set and your shoulders square. It's not like it was that ingenious. Webb flings it high. Pass batted down by Quinta Williams. Intended for Rodell Carter. Quinta Williams has a Good job of doing the quarter. Sometimes this year he's been beat over the top, but for the most part, he does a good job of coming up and making plays. He's got an interception on the year and third in the team with tackles with 27 and doing a good job. Johns gets the second down handoff. No room to run on the left side of the offensive line. Aaron Johns, a senior out of Thomasville, Alabama, who's had a circuitous route to this spot running back at UAB. He was at Alabama, dismissed by Mike Shula when he was coach of the Crimson Tide. Didn't even play football in 2007 after a couple of years at Ohio Lincoln Community College. Now the starting back for the Blazers. The total yards dominant by UAB. And yet the Blazers only one of four on third down. This is third and seven. They pick up the pressure, giving time for Webb, but Forrest can't hang on. Knocked away by the strong safety, Ernest Miller. Well, when push comes to shove, Joe Webb's going to want to put the ball in the hands of Frantrell Forrest. Houston doing a good job of bringing pressure. They decided to roll the dice there and blitz the linebackers up inside, but instead of running, Joe Webb pulls the ball down and throws it to Frantrell Forrest, who looked like he lost concentration at the end, didn't watch the ball into his hands, and ended up missing the ball. Nearly blocked. Waters gets the punt away. It's fielded by one of the Cougar upmen at the 42. Chaz Rodriguez hauls it in on the rollout punt by Swayze Waters, which was nearly blocked. 
Now it's time for the answer to the Aflac trivia question, which was, Aflac. who holds the record for most passing yards in a single game, Division I-A record? David Klingler, and yes, 716 yards passing versus Arizona State. I wonder where those Arizona, uh, Arizona State DBs are right now. Probably in rehab. You know, Jim Jeffcoat, the defensive lineman at Arizona State, maybe he was on that Arizona State team. yards in that game against the Sun Devils. That's quite an impressive day, but man, I got to keep going back to Arizona State and those defensive backs. At some point, you got to be able to figure out what you're doing. Playing muscled up defense like that. Second down and eight. Anthony Barnes. Anthony Barnes, the right defensive end, the junior at a Hazelhurst, Mississippi, doing a good job of holding the point of line of scrimmage and absolutely whooping Sebastian Vollmer from Karst, Germany. Seabass, as he's known. Third down and long for the Cougars again. Keenum dancing, slips out of a tackle, dragged down at the 46. Houston is now one of seven on third down against the Blazer defense. Let me tell you how good Joe Henderson is. You look at him at the right of the screen, he leaves. Case Keenum dancing around there, he'll come back in the play. He's so good, he takes on blockers and referees right there. He just smacks them down, knocks the ref out of the way. Give him two tackles. Woo! Joe Henderson, great job running sideline to sideline and tackling in open space. And then Turner sails that one almost through the end zone. Not the goal when you're punting from your own 40. So Joe Henderson takes out Case Keenum and takes out one of the officials as well. Joe's idol's Ray Lewis. Looked like he was Ray Lewis on that play. A senior out of Birmingham, John Carroll High School. He says, of course, I mean, any linebacker is going to love Ray Lewis, but he also loves the vocal leadership of Ray Lewis, which he's become famous for. So Joe says, yeah, that's exactly what he tries to bring to the UAB defense. He would love it if he got compared with Ray Lewis a little bit more. Who was your favorite football player growing up? Warren Moon. Good choice. Run and shoot offense here in Houston. That pass is tipped by Joe Webb and incomplete. How about your favorite? I was kind of a Ronnie Lott, Jesse Sapulu type guy, Roger Craig. Grew up in the Bay Area. See right now, Houston doing a good job of bringing pressure again, getting his hand up and making the play. Jake Ebner does a good job. And right now, Houston's defense seems to be playing inspired and making some plays. See Webb backing off, getting the call from the line of scrimmage. Coaches on the sideline are looking at the defense. If they see something they like, they will change the play. If not, they will keep it on. Pressure coming on second down and 10. Phillip Hunt drops Joe Webb. And with that sack, Phillip Hunt is the active career leader in Division 1A college football in sacks. What makes Phillip Hunt so good is his speed and ability, but it was a terrible whiff block by the left tackle. Not even blocking him. Thought he had help inside. Clearly, that was a slide protection up front, which is, means everybody just has a gap. Phillip Hunt is not the guy, if you're an offensive line, that you want to leave unblocked. Third down and 21. Webb on the rollout, maybe just looking for field position here. So the sack by Phillip Hunt will force UAB to punt it away. Hunt now 25 and a half sacks in his Houston career. Now, Aaron, you were an offensive lineman. I know you didn't get beaten much, but 
Who was the best that you saw in getting off the edge and sacking the quarterback? Well, uh, I had the unfortunate pleasure in my freshman year of blocking some guy named Chris Zorich who had arms like legs and legs like people. <laughs> and I was about 280 pounds and ended up on the ground more than I did, I think, in my entire high school career. There also was a guy by the name of Brian Young, something or other. Fortnette fumbles the football again. Already one fumble from Fontenet in punt return. This time, Houston gets it back. Quinta Williams is the guy who gets back on top of the football. A lot of miscues right now for Houston. Again, looking up into the light. Something may be happening. I don't know what it is, but there's no excuse. That's something that these players work on every day in practice. Both times they were fair catches, so I don't know if he's worried about people coming down and hitting them. He shouldn't be because he's calling the fair catch, but whatever it is, they've got to get that figured out. Cougars got lucky there. Case Keenum finds Hafter for the third time tonight. The big tight end rumbles to the 39. As we check out our Bud Light stat six pack, the scoreboard favors UAB, and so do the numbers. We'll take a look at the Bud Light stat six pack in just a few. We'll put it on ice. Keena pressured on second down, flings it to Tyron Carrier, who makes the grab. You know, Hafner told me yesterday, Mark Hafner said, the, the biggest thing I've learned playing with Case Keenum is you don't give up on a play because he can make something happen when everything else is broken down. Keenum looked like a smooth, cool vet on that play. He had pressure in his face. The offensive line did a good job of holding up for the most part. There was a little bit of seepage, but Keenum keeps the play alive and moves the chains. 24-yard pickup, Case Keenum to Tyron Carrier. First and 10 inside the UAB 40. Keenum locks in on Carrier again. Incomplete, says the line judge. UAB playing a soft zone on that play, not wanting to get beat over the top, giving up the underneath. But with this high-powered Cougar offense and Case Keenum at quarterback, I don't know if that's what they want to do. I think if UAB is going to have a chance, they're going to have to be aggressive with the speed and this good offense. Sitting back, they'll get picked apart. That's what's typically happened to them in the second half. But right now, they've done a dang good job in the first half keeping Houston's offense in check. Bell, the second down carry to the UAB 30. Just over two minutes away from the half here in Houston, so we'll be sending you to the CBS College Sports Desk at the half. Kevin Dunn will guide you through the Clemson Wake Forest highlights inside college football game taking a look at the big weekend matchups including Texas and Oklahoma plus a little basketball talk with Chester PA native Bo Ryan coach of Wisconsin third down Keenan to the end zone incomplete here comes the flag for pass interference <laughs> Terrell Springs will be whistled for pass interference against the red shirt freshman Patrick Edwards the former walk on that's what UAB expected in these situations from the Cougars with the way that Patrick Edwards can go get the football that's what you get when you got a freshman on freshman hey. pass interference defense number 20 15 yards automatic first down Terrell Springs does a good job of closing, but right here he doesn't turn around, doesn't know where the ball's at, puts his hands around his waist just too early. He was afraid of giving up the touchdown, and I have to say that I like that play because if he had not done it, it looked like it was going to be a sure touchdown. First down and 10, Joseph lined up at quarterback. Keenum, Keenum rather, split as a wide receiver. Joseph rolls right, dragged down by Joe Henderson. It's been iced down, so we bring back the Bud Light stat six-pack. Rush yards big time for UAB. Mass yards actually now favoring Houston. Total yards still Blazers in command. The penalties four by UAB. They had 11 last week, including 
six personal fouls. Only 3.1 yards per play for Houston, the team who's averaging 545 yards a game, fourth in the nation. Make no mistake about it, this Houston offense is good. They're out of sync in this first half, but my guess is there'll be a semi-somewhat vocal inspirational talk at halftime. They've got a minute 45 now. They're in the red zone. They do a good job down here. They got to be able to find a way to punch it in. Kevin Just, Sumlin and offensive coordinator Dana Holgerson visiting with the team before a big couple of plays before the half. You got it down inside the 20, so officially this is the red zone for the team in red, the Houston Cougars. Second down coming up. In the red zone, I would have to think that Houston would get the football to one of their most surest receivers and Mark Hafner, the tight end wide receiver hybrid. It's kind of an unwritten rule in football. When you get down in the red zone, the tight end's a great target because of their big body and they don't have to run far and get behind defenses. They have to get through the defense and Hafner's certainly shown an ability to be able to do that this year. And with eight touchdowns, he knows how to get in the paint. Blazers bring pressure, play action on second down. Keenum lobs it, caught, incomplete. Through the hands of Kier Johnson. Opportunities and miscues by Houston is what's killing them. Keenum does a good job, and Kier Johnson does a great job of going up and getting the football, put it right into his hands, but just can't come down with it. Another miscue and missed opportunity by this Houston offense. Third down and 13. Houston only one of seven on third down in the first half. Keenum did a good job of throwing that ball high, so that if he didn't catch it, it would have went out of the back of the end zone. Third down, Keenum throws it to Hafner off his hands and incomplete. Found the dragging tight end just like you anticipated him. They're listening to me down there. They must be. But again, Hafner does a good job of finding the holes in the defense, but just can't come catch, uh, can't come up with it. The ball's throwing a little bit behind them, but still, when you're Mark Hafner and you're a senior and you're a beast in the weight room and your nickname's Muscles, you got to use them and come down with that football. This will be a 36-yard kick from Ben Bell who missed from 27 and 44 at ECU. Got it. Ben Bell puts Houston on the scoreboard finally. With a minute 27 to go before the half, Kevin Sumlin's team breaks the UAB shutout. Look at Neil Calloway. He looks so calm and so relaxed. He's up by 10 against a very good Houston offense. That's the number one passing offense in the country. And his defense is coming to show up and play. But this is the mild demeanor of Neil Calloway. He's coached a lot of football and been around a lot of programs. And he's an old Wiley vet. He knows in football you can't get too excited and you can't get too down. You just got to go out and execute. And right now his football team is doing exactly that. Oh, former University of Houston assistant when Kim Helton was the head coach here. 1993 to 1996, Neil Calloway was co-offensive coordinator when Kim Helton was the head coach, including 1996, the first year of Conference USA football. The Houston Cougars won Conference USA. They beat a ranked Southern Miss team, and then they beat Louisville at the end of the year. That was the last time prior to the East Carolina win that a Houston football team had beaten a ranked opponent. It had been 12 years between wins over ranked opponents between that Southern Miss win in 96 and then the win at East Carolina. Twelve days ago in Greenville, North Carolina. Touchback, so the UAB offense gets it from the 20. Well, with under two minutes left and only a minute and a half, it'd be interesting to see whether or not UAB decides to take some shots downfield and risk turning the ball over, or play conservative, keep their 10-point lead in the halftime, and keep the football on the ground. I say take a shot. But I'm a risk taker. 
Sometimes I rip tags off my mattresses. <laughs> Have you been caught yet? Not yet. But the mattress inspectors are listening though. First and 10 from the 20. The screen to the tight end, Jeffrey Anderson, who picks up all of five yards. With the clock rolling, now UAB does have two timeouts left here in the first half. Jeff Anderson, another one of those players that's banged up, didn't practice this week, but come out and play, and there's probably five or six or seven or eight starters on this team that didn't practice this week that are finding their way on the football field. Second down and five, bobbled, but caught for a first down by Rodell Carter. Clock temporarily stops with 57 seconds left in the second. UAB still has two timeouts, so it gives them a lot of choices offensively to be able to take advantage of the middle of the field. Right now, they're playing the edges, but with Franchel Forrest and some of the speedy receivers they have pretty quickly here, I think they're going to take a shot downfield. Miller, the safety, creeps up on first down. Webb flings it the other way. What a grab by Carter going right over the top of Quinta Williams. Finally knocked out at the 31. Doing his Tyrone Prothro impression from a couple years back. You just got to go up and get the football. Poor tackling by this on the University of Houston. But you watch Carter doing a good job of running. Kenta Williams was right there, but looked up at the wrong time. The ball was thrown perfectly inbounds. Carter having the wherewithal to go up and get the football. And a lot of times, Carter, when it comes down to it, going up and getting the football is about want to. I mean, around the back of the head, just like the Alabama wide receiver Tyrone Pogro had a couple years ago against Southern Miss. Screen set up for Frantrell Forrest. Near another UAB first down. The Blazers will take a timeout to stop the clock with 27 seconds left in the first quarter. In the first half, rather, second quarter. I did ignore your pro throw comment. <laughs> I apologize for that. But I was locked on. And Remember that, where he kind of rolls into the end zone, touchdown unbelievable. Alabama? Unbelievable. Some of the playmaking ability, I mean, I was a big guy in the middle of the trenches, and things that we would appreciate is people getting blasted or guys running downfield or blowing a guy two or three yards off the ball, maybe a holding penalty every once in a while. But to see skilled players out on the edge do what they do, it's, it's kind of like that appreciation because in my heart, Carter, I think I'm a wide receiver, a skill guy. When we played flag football, I was unstoppable. But I never really had a chance to make play on the college or professional level. Didn't try the fumble Ruski? No. It's too much running. Truth be told, I would have been panic-stricken if they had ever thrown me a, the ball in a football game. Webb looking to the sideline, even out of the timeout, after he gets a look at the Houston defense. This is first and 10 from just outside the 20. With less than 30 seconds to go in the first half. Went to the end zone for Langford. Touchdown, Blazers. In a UAB team who hasn't beaten a Division I-A opponent this year, leads it 19-3. to Well, this is what we talked about at the beginning of the game. Running corner routes and running on obvious first downs. With just a perfect corner route, not covered. The corner route works so well because it puts a lot of pressure on that safety having to come over and cover. Right there, UAB runs it to perfection, puts the ball in the end zone. Webb to Carter for a 38-yarder, the big play in the drive, but the TD pass goes to Zach Langford, the tight end, on that corner route. Good job by Langford, good pressure upside. Houston does a good job of trying to run the blitz and run a stunt inside, but it doesn't work giving Webb enough time to be able to sit back and throw the football. And Langford does a good job of finding the holes in the defense, and the safety comes over late. Fontenet and can't get there. Wide open touchdown for the Blazers. Very hard, Carter, to be able to cover that. Puts a lot of pressure on that safety. It's a lot of field for him to cover. UAB has taken the Robertson Stadium crowd right out of this ballgame. Remember, it had been 40 days between home games here for the Houston Cougars, August 30th against Southern University. They were supposed to play Air Force here. That game got moved to Dallas because of Hurricane Ike. And it has been UAB's offense upstaging the Cougar offense. 
Yeah, they were getting after it pretty good when we walked in. The, some of the fellas from the Pi Kappa Phi fraternity were out there partying up. Had some foosball going. Little squid kick. Bell picks it up at the 20. Yeah, they, they were rocking the classic. The George Thurgood, the Delaware Destroyers were getting blasted out there in the parking lot, getting ready for game time. There were some Houston fans fired up about watching this football game. I'll tell you what, it's been a long time since they've been able to see it. And in these communities where there's natural disasters like the hurricane did, it's pretty disruptive. So much like the general population, these young college football players like to be able to have some sort of consistency. So they're pretty happy to have their team back in their stadium. And yet the Cougars trail 20 to 3. One last shot for the Cougar offense in the first half. Pitch to Tyron Carrier. 35 around the 40. Temporarily stopping the clock with 11 seconds. Cougars do have two timeouts. Tyron Carrier showing his speed. That probably one of the most intangible things that he has to offer as a football player, and he brings a lot of it. He's an injured UAB player, so official timeout here. You mentioned Carrier and the speed, a 200-meter runner. That's Joe Happy, who's down right now for UAB. The new father, Joe Happy, who just eight days ago, maybe Emma Joe Happy, born to Joe and his wife, Carla. Happy limping around. One of the leaders of this UAB team. Just a junior, but very vocal leader, very hard worker, and brings a lot to this club. And you hate to see another injury by another UAB player. And knowing Joe Happy, though, he'll be back. Clock starts on the ready for play. UAB wants a timeout. They were not lined up properly defensively. Clock showing five seconds. My guess is the defensive call here will be don't let the receiver behind you on three. Ready, break. Case Keenum certainly has the arm strength to be able to reach the end zone. And again, we talked about going up and getting the football. That's about want to. He's drawn some comparisons, Case Keenum has, to a smaller, not quite as big, but a smaller Joe Flacco, the former quarterback for the Delaware Blue Hens. Now, Kevin, someone says, I'm just fine with Case's size. He's listed 6'2". I, I don't think he's 6'2", but Kevin, someone says if he was 6'6", he'd be playing football somewhere else. We're happy to have him here. It's actually Blake Joseph who is lined up at quarterback right now with Keenum split wide. So Joseph throwing down the middle, complete to Castile. Zeroes on the clock. This is the last play of the half. Castile is ridden out of bounds, and that will do it. So Joseph completes it to Castile. Fireworks at the end of the first half, but it's UAB, a 20 to 3 lead of the half. We'll send you to Kevin Dawn at the CBS College Sports Desk after these messages. I can't believe I'm beating Billie Jean King. You're not beating me. In fact, you haven't even got a serve in. Okay. You might want to take a gander at the uh, scoreboard. Whoa. What's with the Geico sign, Billie Jean? They're sponsoring all this. I get it. I quit, but I get it. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's hilarious. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Introducing Payne's newest vanishing act. New Icy Hot Vanishing Scent. Now the power of Icy Hot glides on Icy to dull paint, then gets hot to relax it away, and the scent vanishes. New Icy Hot Vanishing Scent. Make pain and scent a vanishing act. College football on CBS College Sports is being brought to you by TIAA Craft Financial Services for the Greater Good. And by Icy Hot. It's icy to dull the pain, then hot to relax it away.
in Houston, Texas. We're just south of downtown at Robertson Stadium, where it's the University of Houston Cougars trailing 20 to 3 at the half. Moments ago, we spoke with Houston head coach Kevin Sumlin. Coach, of what went wrong in the first half, what did you address your team first about in the locker room? Well, we, we just addressed them about uh, more than anything else how we're doing things, the tempo in which we're playing, our enthusiasm, and 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 that's what we need to to to, to address. I mean, we we we've been flopping around, balls on the ground, and, and we we've got to get going offensively. And on the other side of the ball, coach, what are you guys planning on do to stop Joe Webb in the second half? Well, he's you know we got to contain him. We we. We did a pretty good job in the second quarter and field position was a, was a factor but there's no doubt we, we've got to make some adjustments and take some chances there but we're just a hair off on offense we had some drop balls and some missed throws I, I look for us to, to, to get that execution thing up in, in the second half. Thank you coach. Thanks. Plenty of fodder for Kevin Sumlin as we take a look at the all state halftime stats and you know, the, the, the passing yards didn't exactly even at the half only because of that last big pass play for the University of Houston. But clearly the score and all the numbers in favor of the UAB Blazers. Blazers. So you heard the things that Kevin Sumlin said he was going to address uh, in the second half leading into the second half. What do you think Houston did the most wrong in the first half? Well, it was all simple execution. There was a lot of plays there for Houston. They just couldn't find a way to get the ball in their playmakers' hands. And defensively, they couldn't stop Joe Webb. There's a lot of miscues for this Houston offense and defense on both sides of the ball. And, of course, the Blazers on the flip side have done just about everything right at 20-3 to halftime lead. And they are the focus of our tailor-made play. <laughs> well, we talked at the beginning of the game of the uh, progressive keys about the Blazers' offense having to attack the cover two. There's two deep safeties here, so keep your eye on Zach Langford. The tight end does a great job running the corner route, hitting it perfectly. That is perfect execution. The corner route is a great play against cover two because it puts a lot of pressure on the safeties, and you got to credit Frantrell Forrest doing a good job of running the seam route to hold that safety to allow the touchdown for Langford. Back on August 30th, UAB had a one-point lead on Tulsa at the break at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. And then the Golden Hurricane outscored UAB 24-0 in the second half. That's exactly what the Blazers will be looking to avoid tonight as they seek their first conference win of the season on the road here at the University of Houston. Blazers will get the football to start the second half. Slaughter will take a knee in the end zone. So we, we told you before we even started this one that Joe Webb and Case Keenum were the clear focal points of the offense. Here's the QB comparison. And it's really no comparison. No, it's not. And uh, the stats we saw at halftime were really misleading because they looked very equal. But that's one of the things that I think we expect to see out of Houston this second half is better play by Case Keenum. Only 110 yards, no touchdowns, no interception. That is not the leading passer in college football. Joe Webb has done as dangerous a job running the football as he has thrown it. 86 rushing yards in the game for Joe Webb. Handing off to Rashad Slaughter on first down. Tate Stewart stands him up after a five-yard pickup. Rashad Slaughter is one of those backs that seems to get better as the game goes along and better as the season goes along. He's coming off the season best game that he's had so far uh, in their last game versus ECU. Had 92 yards, just side of 100. But he's a good running back that they love. You mean versus Memphis? Yes, excuse me. <laughs> I need some vitamins. Need some icy hot. <laughs> Second down and five now for the Blazers. On the rollout, Slaughter taking on a defensive tackle, Jake Ebner. Webb only picks up two on the play, bringing up third down and short. Interesting third down call here again. Not very good by UAB on third down, only 40% on the year, but this is just a lead with Schlatter going up. Webb doing a good job, but the safeties are coming up, and that's something I'm wondering if we're going to see in the second half is more safety play coming up to support the run because they had such a hard time stopping that in the first half. Third down and three. Blazers are only one of six on third down. 
Pressure up the middle from Lubajowski. Webb picks it up, finds Forrest. That is just the third, third down conversion of the night combined. UAB has two now. Houston only has one. Franchel Forrest doing a good job. Houston, as indicated by Coach Sumplin, was bringing pressure, but Forrest does a good job of sitting the hole in the zone, and his forward progress got him the first down. First down and 10, Webb, pressure, drop from behind, Phillip Hunt got him again. Keep your eye on Philip Hunt up here at the top, does a great job with a speed rush, is what he's so good at. The tackle tries to cut him, but that's the number one rule as a tackle. You gotta see what you cut and keep your head up. Philip Hunt does a good job of pushing the offensive blocker down, then using his tremendous speed to close and get his hands around a very active quarterback. Second down and long, Webb pressured again. Dumps it off short to Aaron Johns, and the Cougar defense coming to life at the start of the third quarter. Well, I think if the speech we saw by Jim Jeffcoat was any indication, Coach Sumlin talked about at halftime. We just heard it a minute ago. There was about, there was lackluster. They were kind of walking around. They weren't playing with any intensity. Right now, keep your eye on Philip Hunt, who's waving his arms to the crowd right down here at the bottom of the screen, trying to get this crowd back in and energized. Third and long for this Blazer offense. Huge play, Carter. Huge. This is third down and 14. Pressure up the middle again. Webb incomplete. Intended for Rodell Carter. You said that was a huge play, which makes that a huge stop for Jim Jeffcoat in the Houston defense. He had to be happy with the way his entire defensive unit played there. He only coaches a defensive line, but you win as a team and you lose as a team. And right there, his star player, Philip Hunt came through and made a huge play to make it third and long, but that's what you need to come back out from halftime, make a huge play and respond to get your team energized, and let's see if the Houston offense can do the same. Waters bobbles it, has to fall on it inside the 10. Momentum is all red right now. This is what we talked about, is miscues. UAB has struggled at special teams at times, and it's coming up to catch them and bite them here on this play. You can't afford to do this and give Houston's offense the ball on the eight-yard line. That is execution. In the first half, it was Houston not getting it done, and right out of the gate, it's the Blazers trading places and putting their defense in a tremendously difficult situation. The momentum has swung here, Carter. Now can Case Keenum and Houston capitalize? First and goal from inside the 10. End around for Andre Kahn. Drag down Joe Henderson leading the way. Turner ends up making the tackle. Now, this is continuing a trend now for UAB. Last week versus Memphis, they had a missed PAT from Swayze Waters, missed 40-yard field goal, a punt blocked. Then they had another potential touchback they didn't get to in time, and they had another ball downed at the one on a punt return. I mean, it was an awful special teams day for UAB and a critical special teams mistake early third quarter here. Keenum stands and delivers to Mark Hafner. Keenum took a shot on that play, but was able to deliver the ball to one of his favorite targets. Mark Hafner does a good job just dragging, getting inside the defense. Great job by Mark Hafner delivering the football. That's a simple pitch and catch. When it boils down to it, Carter, at the end of the day, that's execution. That's what Houston missed in the first half. Case Keenum, that is a tough play. I mean, he, was, he knew he was going to take the hit. Third down and goal. Houston only has one third down conversion tonight. One of eight on third down. Keenum pressured again. Flag on the play. Keenum throws it to the back of the end zone. Jump ball. Caught. Touchdown, Houston. LJ Castile. Now the question, will it stand? 
I don't think so, and it's unfortunate because LJ Castile gave a clinic going up and getting the football there. Holding. Offense, number 59. 10-yard penalty, third down. All for not. Yeah, I believe that was Sebastian Vollmer holding Bryant Turner. Does a good job of coming upfield. They run a stunt again, and it's just seepage late. I mean, just see he gets tackled there at the end. You cannot do that as an offensive lineman. Part of being an offensive lineman is somewhat being an actor, and even when you pull or hold a guy, you got to at least make it look like you didn't. Third down and goal again, but this time they're backed up to the 14. UAB only sends four. The dump off. Turn in the corner for the touchdown, Tyron Carrier. Wipe out the first touchdown. Just put another six up there. Tyron Carrier does a good job of getting out there. Keep your eye on number 92, Anthony Barnes, who dropped off in coverage trying to run with him. Tyron Carrier is one of the fastest players on this Houston team. There's no way a defensive lineman, even as, as athletic as Anthony Barnes is, can keep up with him one-on-one. -on -one. Great mismatch by the coaching staff, or the offensive coaching staff of the Cougars. Ben Bell for the PAT. Cougars within 10 now. The Cougar offense capitalizing on the special team's mistake. Doesn't matter. Hold on one play, we're getting in the end zone anyway. Have work to do? You need a truck. Step up to the best. It's GMC Truck Month. Get professional grade engineering, power, payload, and fuel efficiency. Like the Sierra 1500 with better available V8 fuel economy than Toyota Tundra. It's time to go to work. It's GMC Truck Month. Now get 0% APR financing or 5,000 purchase bonus cash on the 2008 GMC Sierra. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. I'm Danielle Santoro in New York. One look at USC and you will have no doubt about how talented they are. One Trojan guaranteed to stand out is safety Taylor Mays. Last year as a sophomore, he was named first team All-America. Let me introduce you to one of the hardest hitters in college football. Meet Taylor Mays. Taylor Mays, junior free safety, USC Trojan, defense. My strengths on the field, I feel like I get to the ball, I feel like I'm able to read the quarterback, able to read the offensive line, I feel like I'm able to make great open field tackles, and I feel like I'm able to provide leadership on the field. I wore number two because of Charles Woodson wore it, Deion Sanders wore it. I feel like uh, the great collegiate DBs wore number two, so hopefully I'll, I'll be one of them. I came to USC to, to be the best. I think that's why all the guys on the team came here, because they know that this gave us the best opportunity to be the best players that we could be. And I feel like uh, to this day, it's, it's, it's coming more and more true. The best part of playing in the Coliseum is, is the atmosphere, the tradition that comes along with it, um, that comes along with the program, and, and being out there with all the great players that have been out there before. I don't have an embarrassing football moment. I've messed up before, but I feel like I've learned from everything that I messed up. Messed Restart. You want me to restart? I don't have an embarrassing football moment. I feel like I learned from my mistakes, so it's not really an embarrassing moment. It's more of a, a learning uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> People think, you know, USC, that I'm out having fun outside of football. I don't really have that much fun outside of football. Football is my life. I don't really have a social life. I like to just watch film, lift weights, eat good food, and, and get ready for the next practice or workout. That's it for CBS College Sports Extra. We'll see you later. In 30 minutes of football in the first half, Houston didn't get into the end zone. It takes a minute 37 on that drive and less than five minutes into this third quarter before the Cougars get in the end zone. And it was set up by the bobble punt from Swayze Waters. That allowed Houston to short field. And even though there was a holding on one touchdown that wiped it away, 14-yard TD pass, Keenum to Carrier.
Jordan Manisto boots it away to Rashad Slaughter. Slaughter to the 22 as we check in with the CBS College Sports Desk. I hear there's another shootout going on. Scoring game in the ACC here. It's 20 to 10. UAB leading Houston, but the momentum has swung early in this third quarter to the Houston Cougars. And it began on defense. With the first down carry. Tackled by Marcus McGraw, the true freshman, weak side linebacker. UAB's got to find something to get themselves going offensively and avoid the classic mistake that they've done all year long, which was start out fast but not play for 60 minutes. Unfortunately, this is classic Blazer football that we've seen so far in the second half. Let's see if they can pull themselves out and grow up as a football team and play for 60 minutes. Safety pressure coming from Miller. They bring 10 in the box, expecting the second down run. Slaughter is shoved back after a two-yard gain. Well, we talked to Coach Sumlin at halftime. He said, we need to be more aggressive. So it helps them stop the run. But when you do that, it makes yourself susceptible to play action passes over the top. But right now, Houston's defense is having their way with the Blazer offense that gave them all they could handle in the first half. Late personnel switch for the Blazers before third down and two. John's in a tailback, and now Webb will run the check with me to the sideline. Webb back to pass on third and two. Incomplete. Kenneth Fontenet, who had an awful first half, comes up to stick Jeffrey Anderson. Another defensive hold for Houston. Jeffrey Anderson, only a sophomore, but the second leading receiver for this Blazer team with 14 catches on the year. Usually sure-handed, doesn't do a good job, and again, it's execution that costs him that. Waters gets this punt away. There's a new kick returner back for the Cougars. It's Tim Monroe. This was the last punt, bobbled by Waters, setting up the first Houston TD of the night to make this a 10-point game. Everything okay, Carl? I'm winning, right? Yeah, but the other drivers think Affleck's sponsorship is giving you an advantage. Well, if you're sick and you can't work, Affleck pays cash fast to help keep you in the race. I know, but they see it a little differently. Taught him that. Half black. Ask about it at work. Get big arms, a lip chest, and cut abs with the perfect push up. Now with free shipping. The perfect push up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the perfect push up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of the push up is captured and transmitted right where you want it to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. Call right now and you get free shipping. Get big fast. Call now for the perfect push-up. The DirecTV Rewards Visa Card delivers more DirecTV for less. Turn your everyday purchases into discounts on our exclusive sports packages, your favorite premium movie channels, or state-of-the-art HD DVRs. Apply today and you'll get $5 off your monthly DirecTV bill for a full year. There's simply no limit to the DirecTV Rewards Visa Card. Call now and let the savings begin. 
certainly something to celebrate here at the University of Houston campus. Alma mater of our colleague Jim Nance. Taub Hall here, with room 101. That's where Jim Nance spent his freshman year. He's a proud Cougar. In fact, Jim plans to be back for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Wade Phillips, University of Houston alum, is uh, going into the University of Houston <laughs> Hall of Fame. No word on whether Jim was part of that revelry in the stands back in the day. The University of Houston fan. Of course, he was on the golf team, too. Freddie Couples. In the flat, wide receiver screen set up for Tyron Carrier. On Saturday, more college football coming your way here on CBS College Sports. It's TCU versus Colorado State. Aaron and I will be in Fort Collins. And then at 8 Eastern, number 15, Boise State in Hattiesburg to take on Damian Fletcher and the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Things have turned around here in the second half between Houston and UAB. Keenum flings it to Hafner. Nice grab. <laughs> Hafner loses the football. It appears to go out of bounds, meaning Houston would keep it. Kind of get the feeling watching these teams that the momentum has drastically shifted. Now Case Keenum is putting some zip on the ball. Hafner's catching it. They're just pitching and catching and executing. It really looks like this Houston offense has settled down and it's the Blazers that are kind of dragging around, not playing enthusiastic. Top two receiving tight ends in college football both reside in Houston. Hafner at the University of Houston and James Casey, Mr. Everything, Mr. Thor, for Rice University, just a few miles away. And yeah, Hafner is kind of a tight end inside receiver now, but he says, I still like hitting guys coming off the line of scrimmage. So I still consider myself a tight end, not a receiver. Very rare you find a tight end that likes to bring the wood and, and block. They usually like to just run around and catch it. David Epperly, the referee, says they're going to take a look at this play upstairs in the replay booth. This is an official review, not a challenge from either side. Great catch, clearly in bounds there, covers the football up. But Brandon Carlisle does a good job of coming up and putting his shoulder on the football textbook and causes the ball to jar loose. Keep your Let's eye on number four. Keep your eye on the football. There it goes. Bouncing out. It's clearly off of Carlisle out of bounds. So there's can't be any possession there by UAB in bounds. Obviously, if Carlisle gains possession of it and then fumbles it out of bounds. It's UAB football, but Hafner was the last guy with possession of the football. It's a lot of ifs on that one. That didn't happen. Carter, if my back wasn't quite as hairy, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't I don't want to know. I don't want to know the rest of that sentence. That is an if-then statement I would rather not hear about. Got to take me as I am. So it's clearly a fumble by Hafner, catch and fumble, but it goes out of bounds, meaning that Houston keeps it. And ruling on the field is third down coming up, so Hafner didn't reach the sticks for a first down. And it likely will be third down coming up for the University of Houston. Too glad the Blazers didn't get that one because those are the exact type of plays that can swing the momentum back to the Blazers' side, especially this far back when Houston's backed up against the offense. but. Right now, one play can change this ball game. UAB, for as bad as they're playing, still holds a 10-point lead, but you have the feeling with the way they've self-destructed, with the way they didn't do anything offensively in the second quarter, that the momentum is going to Houston. Dan Blum is our replay official. He is still taking a look. He's made his decision, which will be announced by David Epperle. After review, the ball was fumbled. Touched by an out of bounds player at the 20, resulting in third and one at the 20. They may have been looking at the spot. So, from that explanation from David Epperly, not so much looking to see who has possession of it, but looking at the spot. So, the explanation is touched by an out of bounds player. That would be a UAB player. Houston maintains possession, third down. 
Cougars look like they want to quick snap it up to the line quickly for third down and short. Fake to Bell. Throw to Patrick Edwards, who has the first down near the 25. That is just the third third down conversion of the night for Houston. That second third down conversion was actually the touchdown on third down and goal. Chase Daniel on the stop. Great job by Patrick Edwards, one of their big playmakers who we haven't heard much of from tonight, but comes up with a big first down there. And UAB brought the heat on that one and didn't pay off for him. First down, handoff to Bell. You mentioned Patrick Edwards, the redshirt freshman from Hearn, Texas. When Kevin Sumlin and his staff came in, he was just simply known as Hearn because he was a walk-on. Not many people around this University of Houston program knew a whole lot about him. They just knew he was from Hearn, Texas. They were quickly impressed by his speed, his route running, his ball catching. So he's earned a featured role in this Houston offense. Is has Bryce Bell, the true freshman, who breaks it. Stretching for the end zone, did he get in? Apparently not, he's knocked out at the three. Freshman quarterback Terrell Springs does a good job of chasing Bell down, but this was a simple play that got brought on by poor tackling from the UAB Blazer defense, not wrapping up, not staying in your lanes, giving up way too much, and Bell shows you why he's so good and so explosive, putting the afterburners, but he's gonna take some heat from his teammates for getting caught at the one. Officially say he's knocked out at the three yard line. So this is first and goal from the three with a play clock winding down and a whistle. Timeout UAB before the snap. The big 70 yarder from Keenum to Bell. Makes a happy case Keenum. In our house, we play football. With heart and intensity, power and speed. Grace and athleticism. Courage and toughness. And character. Our uniforms are different, but we speak as one. Football in Conference USA is about competition and rivalry. Tradition and passion. And respect for our opponents. This is Conference USA. Sportsmanship lives here. Back at Robertson Stadium on the campus of the University of Houston. Cougars trail 20 to three at the half. But a touchdown less than five minutes into this third quarter has made this a 10 point game. And now with just over six and a half remaining in the third. Case Keenum, the sophomore from Abilene, Texas, has first down and goal from the three. Two for two scoring tonight for the Cougars. One touchdown, one field goal when they've been inside UAB's 20. Khan takes the handoff into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Welcome back, Andre Khan, who missed the last couple of games with a knee injury. Partially torn MCL. Looking pretty healthy on the three-yard TD run. So is that offensive line that traded turns and blew off that good defensive line for UAB, punching in the touchdown. But great job by the eyes and vision of Khan to take the cutback, take what the defense gives you, punch it in, and give them a much-needed touchdown. PAT is good from Ben Bell. It's a field goal game. Three-point game with six and a half to go in the third. The big bell pass play setting up Andre Kahn and finally a happy Kevin Sumlin. This is Conference USA. Home to talented student athletes from 12 great universities. Every year the competition within these walls gets tougher. The rivalries get more intense. 
It pushes these young men and women to become smarter athletes and stronger students. Pride and respect run deep in our house. Welcome to Conference USA. Competition lives here. Jacksonville, Florida, man, let's go. Stand up. Duval County, man, we out here. Andre Kahn representing Jacksonville. J-Town. Six play, 89 yard drive, capped by the Jacksonville Natives three yard touchdown run. Big boost for the Houston Cougars, having him back there with Bryce Bell as well. That's exactly what Houston's backfield wants to look like. Bell gets a 70 yard at the little burst of speed, allowing Khan to take it in from three yards out. And the Cougars are within three. Jordan Manisto's kickoff to Rashad Slaughter. Speaking of Slaughter, let's look at the third down total yards between UAB and Houston. Wow. 107 to negative four. Talk about classic self-destruction. These are the same players on the football field, but something has happened with this Houston team where they have come to play, and something is not happening with UAB. And right now, it's want to. The Blazers have a good offense with weapons. Even though they're hurt, they have to find a way to get something generated on offense. Webb play action to Forrest. Cougars all over the keeper from Webb. Stewart leads the way as we take a look at the Bud Light stat six pack. In the first half, the numbers were all in UAB's favor. They still dominate in the rushing yards, but everything else is starting to turn towards the Houston Cougars with this dominant third quarter. Really seems like the way that Houston's defense has responded is to bring their safeties down. That leaves them very susceptible to play action passes. They have to get out of being predictable UAB. We know that they can run the football, but they've got to take a shot downfield here to keep that Cougar defense honest. Instead, Webb carried it again on second down. Isaiah Thompson, the nose tackle on the stop. Houston doing a good job of running sideline to sideline, playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. You see all the linebackers and all the safeties coming up, taking away the pitches. Houston really playing the run and taking Joe Webb out of this offense. Blazers have to do something, take a shot over the top to get Houston to back off a little bit. They're waving towels here. There's play action. Lubajowski forces Webb to get rid of it. Batted and incomplete. He was looking long for Frantrell Forrest, who is laid out after the hit from the corner, Brandon Brinkley. Blazers will go back and look at that play on film. It was there, but there was pressure in the face. Houston is coming after this Blazer offense, not allowing Joe Webb to get time to set his feet up. They blitz the linebackers, puts a little too much air under it, allowing the safety time to come over. And the Cougar defense responded by putting a lot of red helmets around the football and playing very physical. Something we didn't see in the first couple plays of this ball game. Frantrell Forrest took a shot. Native of Mobile, Alabama, who chose UAB in part because his mother, Sandra, was battling cancer. He wanted to be close to home. To be there with his mother, he told us last week she's doing well, health as well. And for Frantrell Forrest had missed the last two games with a high ankle sprain, so he's finally healthy enough with the high ankle. But he gets popped on that third down incompletion by Brandon Brinkley, so time to think about it on the sideline. Waters' last punt went for 58. He hangs this one up. Takes a friendly UAB roll to go out near the 30. Now it's time for the Home Depot tools for success. UAB still has the lead, so we look back to Joe Webb's first half. 
Joe Webb had a tremendous first half running the football, whether it was called runs or breaking plays with his feet when pass protection went down. That was something that Houston knew that they had to figure out to find a way to stop him, and they were unable to do that in the first half, which is why the Blazers got up. But I got to tell you what, Carter, the first half may have been all Joe Webb, but this second half has been all Case Keenum and this very powerful Cougar offense. Then you'd have to say Home Depot tools for success sub point B would be the Houston defense adjusting to Joe Webb running the football. They're doing it with safeties and putting people in the box. The toss back to Blake Joseph, firing it long for Castile. Incomplete. The flea flicker bomb from Blake Joseph to LJ Castile. LJ Castile, one of the fastest players on this team, does a good job of going up and getting the football, which is why they threw it to him. Of all the receivers that Houston has, they like LJ Castile's ability to time his jumps and go up. You see the back judge right there getting in way, trying to help out, get the tackle himself, but doesn't. And the freshman, Terrell Springs, does a good job of staying and running stride for stride for Castile, bringing up second and 10. That was nearly pass interference on the back judge. <laughs> Kahn gets the second down handoff. Andre Kahn falls forward. You know, contacted near the line of scrimmage there by Lemansky Ware, but the tough frame of Andre Kahn, he's listed 5'10", 195, but that's a tough 195. He drags the linebacker forward for a gain of five. You have to wonder, happened to Bryce Bell, did he? blow his wad on that long run, but it just goes to show you the depth of the backs that they have at Houston. When you be able to put fresh backs in and your defense has been on the field, they start to wear down, but good job by Houston mixing it up. Keenum on third and five, pressure. Slips out of the pressure. Here's where he's most dangerous. UAB was waiting for it, however, and Keenum is knocked out. Similar play versus East Carolina. He threw an 84-yard touchdown. Well, this is Brian Turner doing a good job of rushing over left tackle Sebastian Bulmer, just staying with it, staying aggressive. But Case Keenum so strong and powerful, making plays with his legs. He will not let a play in without him trying to make something out of it. Keenum is capable of tucking it and run, but it's been Webb who's nearing 100 rushing yards. Punt from Turner sails into the end zone. Webb and the Blazers get it at the 20. Aaron, you told us in the first half a big key for UAB was going to be playing 60 minutes. Obviously, with a 20 to 3 lead at the half, now a race with a couple of Houston touchdowns. This is not that playing 60 minutes or playing the full game that the Blazers going to need to win here in Houston tonight. Well, actually, Carter, it was a typo. UAB had to play for six minutes. And that's exactly <laughs> what they did. And for the rest of the game, they've been not executing. They have to figure out a way to get something generated on offense. And I think they need to take some shots downfield. Here's play action. They dump it back to Frantrell Forrest. Strung out by the Houston D. And Forrest is shoved out after just a five-yard game. McGraw forces him out. Don't forget, coming up in the fourth quarter, we'll have the Wrangler five-star play of the game. I like that play call on first down. The last two series, they came out and they ran runs. Very predictable for UAB. They've got to be able to find a way to switch it up, take some play action, take some of the pressure off that run game. It'll be there for them later, but they can't be predictable in what they're doing. Play fake on second and five screen again. Carter makes the grab, and he's hit soon as he catches it by the strong safety Ernest Miller. Correction, it's Jeffrey Anderson, the tight end, who makes the catch. Miller on the tackle. So far we've seen first two plays, they were passes, and now they're moving the chains instead of going three and out, which is what they're doing when they're running. They've got to be able to get, and they're doing a good job of keeping University of Houston off balance defensively so far in this drive. UAB against the 4-3 defense, anticipating the run. Brandon Brinkley steps up to tackle Joe Webb after a one-yard gain. 
Brandon Brinkley does a great job of coming up, but it looks like the University of Houston is spying their linebackers one-on-one -on -one with the quarterback, Joe Webb, so that he doesn't have a place to go. It was a called run and a draw, but Brinkley coming up on run support, and that's exactly what we're talking about. When they're going to run those runs, their DBs are coming up. If they can hit them on a play action over the top, that'll shift this energy in this ballgame. And we saw that deep shot intended for Frantrell Forrest on the play where he got banged up. But running it again on second down. No room to run for Joe Webb. Brinkley ends up shoving him down again after a four-yard rush. So Joe Webb now moves into second place with that carry on the single-season rushing leaders by a quarterback. So Justin Willis, who is now a wide receiver at SMU, has the record for CUSA single-season rushing yards by a QB. But I think Joe Webb's going to own that by the end of 2008. Poor Justin Willis goes from being a leading rusher in Conference USA to being a receiver because you go from the option to the run and shoot. Can you talk about a more drastic swing offensively? Pressure up the middle on third and five. Webb has it picked off. It's Brandon Brinkley with the pick six. Cougars lead. Linebacker blitz sets it up for the junior from Bay City. Interception for Brandon Brinkley on the year does a great job had a great series Something got him fired up and he brought his lunch on that series, but University of Houston is doing a tremendous job of finding ways to make plays and this blazer team is all but deflated Bell for the extra point, motion on the line, but no flags. Keenum will hold. There's a personnel issue here for Houston. They didn't get the right personnel on the field. Play clock winding down, and now a sprinkler comes on. <laughs> All sorts of issues. <laughs> they didn't get the right personnel on, and now a sprinkler. It's now about to douse the UAB sideline. Talk I mean, about this, adding insult to injury. Hey, Cowboy, I don't, I don't think your hand is going to stop that sprinkler. So, so the Cougars go over and say, all right, time to fire off. <laughs> <laughs> As if the Blazer offense wasn't cool enough already. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cut... Cut the hose at some point. <laughs> Look at the cowboy trying to stop this it is, with his hand. This is like when you try to squeeze in 18 and you've only paid for nine. <laughs> Sun goes down and the sprinklers come on. All right, it's time to pack it up and go home. And it is directly on the UAB bench. The students look like they're getting some of that, too. They're having a good time. Old Faithful erupts here at Robertson Stadium. You have the University of Houston mascot doing the running man. Get the crowd <laughs> fired up. like the old oil derrick that the Houston Oilers used to have on the helmet logo. And yeah, now the slip and slide is out. Well, if the crowd wasn't awakened by the 20 to nothing burst for the Cougars here in the third quarter, they're awakened now. Ben Bell gets the PAT. Oh. Brandon Brinkley's interception for a touchdown was so exciting. Turn on the water cannon.
Brinkley does a great job of breaking on this ball, but I believe that this turnover was caused by the pressure. Sumlin talked about wanting to go after Joe Webb. This time it pays dividends during the pass, but Houston's defense comes out. And then to add insult to injury, if it wasn't bad enough for the Blazers, they're already offense that's already cooled off. They hit them with the sprinklers. Oh, it's like you at the dance club, Aaron, running the sprinkler. I'm more of a uh, shopping cart and hitch clipper guy myself. <laughs> So now some doused Cougar fans get to celebrate even more. Neil Calloway and the UAB sideline. They need a little cool water. They're looking kind of hot. <laughs> that, so it's not it's not waterproof body ink that the Houston students applied before coming out to Robertson Stadium. My guess is things aren't quite so funny on the other sideline, taking a look at Case Keenum and what he's done with this offense, but this Blazer team needs to shake off this curse of coming out fast and not getting anything going later. It takes one play and one play only to get the Blazers back in this ballgame. That will not be the play. Slaughter hit hard, brought down by Carson Blackman. Another look at the pick six. See defensive pressure coming up in the middle. The ball's a little wobbly. Carlisle does a good job, or Brinkley does a good job of breaking on that football. Probably a poor choice by Webb to be able to throw that, but when you're forced to try and make plays as a quarterback, that's when the mistakes happen. You got to throw it out of bounds and re-tee it up. You know, usually you do weather conditions and talk about when it rains, it means the football going to be slippery. I mean, now is Joe Webb's hand going to be slippery after getting soaked? Maybe. That pass is low and incomplete, intended for Frantrell Forrest. Incomplete pass. Little scattered showers. Forrest, the intended isolated for showers. Forrest. They were isolated. Speaking of weather, do you ever think about the what's the difference between partly cloudy and partly sunny? Oh, it's, a, it's the glass house. Glass half full. It was a beautiful, you to say. beautiful weather day here in uh, Houston, Texas today. Yeah, I'm percolating quite nicely. Second down and ten. Cougars break through again. So the screen to four is trying to get around the edge. He stiff arms Quinta Williams, who fights back by shoving him out. As we check in again with Kevin at the CBS College Sports Desk. Carter Blackburn with Aaron Taylor. Special thanks to our squeegee tonight, keeping us dry here at Robertson Stadium. Third down and nine coming up for the Blazers. Hunt puts the pressure. Webb completes it. Missed tackle. Close to a first down. Justin Johnson. This will be a close spot for UAB. Calloway sent out a couple of tight ends, thinking maybe even if it is fourth down, he's going to go for it. Well, I think he's got to do something to get the offense going. Not doing much, and it just goes to show you, as good as this Blazer offense is and as good as Joe Webb is, if you take their ability to run the football away, they can't be effective. Is that the biggest adjustment you've seen from Houston defensively in the second half, Key and Moore on Webb? Well, I think it's a couple things. They're keying more on what, but they're playing more aggressive. They're bringing safeties. They're bringing linebackers. The first half, that hurt them, particularly in the first quarter, especially when passes would break down and Joe Webb would take off and run with their feet. But you got to take your hat off to John Skladney and that defense and what they're doing with Houston and bringing the pressure and rolling the dice because Joe Webb has not been able to do anything offensively with his feet. Good halftime adjusting by Sumlin and his staff. When you heard Kevin Sumlin tell us coming out of the locker room, it wasn't so much X's and O's wise, the things that he was looking to adjust in the second half, it was just the effort from his football team. And that's a beautiful thing, because that's an easy fix. If you're outmanned and, and are losing matchups, that, that makes it very difficult. You have to get creative to find things to do. Mm -hmm. 
Webb stays on the field, Blazers will go for it on fourth down. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what, if they don't get this, it's going to be very hard for UAB to be able to dig themselves out of an emotional hole that's much bigger than the physical one that they're in right now. Three of seven on the season going for it on fourth down, about half a yard. And obviously keep an eye on Joe Webb who backs up into the shotgun now. Pooch punt. So instead of going for it on fourth down and half a yard, Webb Pooch punts it down inside the 30. I think that's a great call. When you're on the road, it's a little hard to be able to draw people off with the crowd noise that's so loud, and maybe they were hoping to get a freebie with it being fourth and short. But the way Houston's offense is, you can't take the chance of not converting that fourth down and giving them a half a football build to be able to convert, especially when your team's not playing very well on either side of the football. 37-yard punt by Joe Webb. So he quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and punt. Not bad. Swayze Waters better watch out. That'll be the final play of the third quarter that was owned by the Houston Cougars. A 21 to nothing run by Houston here in the third. 24 to 20 is the score at the end of four. We'll return to Houston after these messages. You're watching CBS College Sports, the pulse of college sports. I've discovered that you never know what you're capable of until you push yourself. I've discovered the strength to be a leader. I've discovered that learning can take you anywhere. UAB is a place to explore your talents and find your future. What can you achieve? Discover yourself at UAB. Houston owns the third quarter, 21 to nothing over UAB. Here, that's exactly what you were talking about for the Blazers. A solid start. They led 20 to three at the half, and then folded in the third quarter. This is the exact same thing they did with Tulsa in the first game. They were going 22 to 21 going into halftime, and then Tulsa exploded in the second half with 24 unanswered points. First play of the fourth quarter is second down. Good protection for Keenum, allowing him to dump it off in a big game coming ahead for Patrick. Nothing but green grass in front. And Touchdown, Hearn. They know his name now. Patrick Edwards, a 70-yard TD catch and run. Patrick Edwards' name mentioned much tonight. Former walk-on shows up huge on this play, puts it in the end zone, and that's the University of Houston offense we're used to seeing. They are so explosive. Zero scholarship offers out of Hearn, Texas. After high school, he came to a summer camp put on by then Houston head coach Art Bryles. He impressed Coach Bryles, invited him to walk on here at the University of Houston. Now he's a big play receiver for the big play Cougars. 31 to 20 now, U of H in command.
Let's go take him out, yeah? Yeah. We got business to handle. Hey, can I can I get a Whopper Junior, please? This is this is my burger king. That's a burger king. Sorry. Can I get some flame broiled beef, please? Got any of that? Uh, we don't do that here. Do you want a sour cream and chocolate potato? A baked potato. A banquet? Are we in Russia? Whopper Jr. and spicy chicken crisp for a buck each. Taking down other value menus. Tell Wendy Whopper Jr. is looking for, okay? I. Houston owned the third quarter and 13 seconds into the fourth, the Cougars own this one as well. The two play 72 yard drive spanning all of 15 seconds. The Cougars are clicking, that's exactly what the offense looks like. This offense is so powerful, can score so quickly, and we watched the Houston team walking around listlessly the first half. I just made a new word up right there. Not really having much emotion going on, nothing going, but they come back and find a way to score and kind of get their mojo and their moxie back, and this team looks totally different than they did in the first half of this football game. Number 40, listlessly. Listlessly. Put it on Urban Dictionary. Brantrell four is dragged down at the 27. Let's look back at the touchdown. Well, Patrick Edwards did a really good job of making this touchdown, but he better think Bryce Bell, who does a great job right here of picking up the blitzing linebacker, B.J. Steed, but it's just a crossing route, and this was what Case Keenum does, is make plays with his feet, but a crossing route. Great job by Patrick Edwards just dragging across the field and then puts it in overdrive. And then another great block by a fellow receiver, Tyron Carrier. That's when an offense is going. Webb and the Blazer offense trying to get on track here in the fourth. The quick dump off to Rashad Slaughter. Yards by quarter is what you're looking at here. And it was all UAB in the first two, but how about the third? The third quarter is the story of this ball game. UAB came out, couldn't get anything generated, but Houston found a way to be able to get yards through the air, get a touchdown right at the end of the quarter. I tell you what, this is a tale of two halves and really of one quarter for the UAB offense. On the end around, this is Justin Johnson who is walloped as he comes around the corner. Ernest Miller, the strong safety, came up and played very physical. And when I'm watching this, <laughs> welcome to college football. Third down and short. Philip Hunt trying to get the Houston fans up on their feet for third down and one. Lubajowski blitzing on third and one. Webb flings it high and drops. Frantrill Flores drops what could have been a touchdown. You see the dejection on Joe Webb's face. He was so happy to get Frantrell Forrest back. Does a good job of getting open. Good protection up front. Lays the ball. You have to wonder if he was worried about getting hit. He, remember, he took that big shot earlier in the game on the same type of play. And there he comes up alligator armed. What a tremendous missed opportunity for this Blazer offense. Tim Monroe back to receive the kick of Swayze Waters. Gets it off cleanly. Good kick. Monroe has to back up. Let's it sail into the end zone. Maybe too good a kick. Touchback. Houston gets the ball at the 20-yard line. A dejected Blazer sideline. Now trailing by 11. Get big arms, a rip chest, and cut abs with the perfect push-up. Now with free shipping. The perfect push-up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the perfect push-up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of the push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. 
And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. Call right now, and you get free shipping. Get big fast. Call now for the perfect push-up. desire there can be no mercy for the man who knows no boundaries one thing has been out of reach now jeff hardy takes on triple h for the wwe championship plus world heavyweight champion chris jericho's nightmare continues Shawn michaels challenges chris jericho to a ladder match for the world heavyweight championship wwe no mercy playing this month on direct tv pay-per-view the score was 20 to three at the half, UAB on top of Houston. And as we check out the Energizer game summary, you can see that things have turned around in a hurry here in the second half for the University of Houston Cougars. Those offensive numbers more like it. This is the offense that we're used to seeing. They only had 161 yards at halftime, but they've exploded in this third quarter. And that's what they're capable of doing. That's what they should be doing. UAB needs to come up with a big play somewhere, offense, defense, somewhere, to turn this momentum back. Instead, it's another big play for the Cougars as Bryce Bell runs away from the UAB defense. The cutback dragged down by Carlisle just short of the goal line. I tell you what, we talked at the beginning of the game about maybe Joe Webb was going to be the Wrangler player of the game, but I tell you what, Bryce Bell is doing a good job showing tremendous lateral quickness, then explosion, getting in the open field. But this is the second time that Bryce Bell, as good of a game as he's having, is getting caught from behind. And I tell you what, if Houston wins this game, he is going to hear it in the locker room tomorrow for getting caught from behind. Watch it, watch it, watch it. 172 yards now from Bryce Bell. Play clock was at zero, no whistle. Well, Jake Castillo may have wished that that play was whistled dead because he got drilled by Lemansky <laughs> Ware. I think everybody's trying to welcome everybody to college football in this game. <laughs> Lemansky Ware can lay a hit. He comes up for a true freshman. He comes up. And he said he's used to being and playing early as a young guy because in high school he did the same thing as a freshman he was playing so he's no stranger to playing with guys much older than him second down and goal bell into the end zone touchdown houston bell gets a big play on the drive the 78 yard rush he's rewarded with the fourth touchdown of his freshman season That's a great play call when you have a horse that takes it all the way down the field for you. You got to be able to feed him the football, let him punch it into the end zone and taste the dessert after the great job of running and showing his athletic ability and putting one in the end zone. PAT makes it 38 to 20 in a dominant second half for the Houston Cougars. The true freshman from Tatum, Texas. Bryce Bell with the 78-yard rush leading to his fourth touchdown of the season. People think the terms SUV and fuel economy don't mix. The truth is a Buick Enclave crossover has better fuel economy than Acura MDX. It has an EPA estimated 24 highway MPG. And unlike the Acura, Enclave seats up to eight. Look it up. Plus, get the best coverage in America. Qualified buyers get 2.9% APR financing for 60 months on all 2008 Buick Enclave models. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. Some good chatter between Bryce Bell and his offensive line. He's saying, yeah, Tate of Texas. And, and yeah, and there you go. Sir Vincent Rogers turning around to say it's the O-line. A couple East Texas guys, Sir Vincent Rogers from Jasper and Bryce Bell from Tatum, Texas, up near Nacogdoches. 
And we're going to take a look here at the kicker, Jordan Manisto. From Westlake Village, California, and, and his kicking style on the kickoffs. Yeah, he's got injured his leg in practice. His kneecap slid out and dislocated and popped back in a subluxation. So he kicks off and lands on the same leg that he kicks off on to keep that pressure off that off leg that he normally plants on. Frantrell Forrest. Knocked down near the 25. Let's go back to the 78-yard run by Bryce Bell to set up the TD. Well, talk about an offensive line doing a good job getting to the second level. Linebacker takes a poor angle there, Joe Henderson, but you see Bryce Bell doing a great job of making the secondary miss. Then it's just about speed. Tucking the football, making another great cut, over pursued by this UAB defense. Make no mistake about it, aided that run as much as Bell's athletic ability allowed it to happen. In a game that was a 17-point lead for UAB is slipping further away from the Blazers. Down by 18 with just over 12 to go. And Tate Stewart in the Houston defensive line shutting down the run game. I tell you what. We saw Jim Jeffcoat at the beginning of the game not happy with the way his defensive line is playing. I think it's going to be a much better or much different film session when they get past that first quarter. UAB has seven rushing yards in the second half. They had 116 in the first. So into the passing game, that sets up Philip Hunt for his third sack of the night. The senior out of Fort Worth, Dunbar. Philip Hunt does a great job of rushing the passer. He likes the speed rush, rushing upfield, doing the rip to set up the rip or spin from the inside. He's not a power rusher necessarily, but he will switch it up. But Coach Callaway has to be sick about what's going on right now because the Blazers aren't able to get anything generated offensively. 27.5 sacks in Philip Hunt's Houston career. That's more than anybody in the country. He is the active leader in sacks. You think Jim Jeffcoat knows how to rush a passer? Well, Philip Hunt's a big Cowboys fan. He says his idol was always Charles Haley. Flag delay a game coming up on UAB. Play a game. Offense. Five yards. Third down. Philip Hunt, sure enough, said, yeah, I, Coach Jeffcoat lets us know that he won two Super Bowls and went to Pro Bowls and played 15 years in the league. He, he lets us know that when he prefaces his instruction. <laughs> and if that instruction is anything like we saw earlier in the game, it, he wouldn't need to preface it with anything. Yeah. <laughs> the draw on third down and 27. Slaughter tries to bounce it outside. He breaks through a few tackles. He's still rolling. Across the 30, nowhere near the first down, but Slaughter was a couple tap dances away from breaking it. Well, that's what we talked about earlier is UAB's offense trying to attack that cover two and switching it up and running on obvious pass downs and seemed to be effective there, but not effective enough, bringing up the fourth down situation and what looks to be a punt. <laughs> Waters bobbles another one. This time he gets it off. Monroe backs up, lets it roll inside the five. It's touched. It is downed inside the one. Nice job by the UAB punt team there. Down it inside the one. But the Houston defense showing up dominant in the second half. Hey, hey, Whew. yeah, you look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Oh, when I'm hurt and miss work? Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yep. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac, ask about it at work. Ah! 
This is a CBS College Sports Encore presentation. College football on CBS College Sports has been brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Wrangler, makers of Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. And by Miller Highlight, good on his beer at a tasty price that's ice cold common sense. Statue of Sam Houston right here, just off of Main Street in Houston, Texas. So guess who the city of Houston is named after? Uh, Sam Houston. Is that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Houston's son? Hey, Texas won its independence right here in the Houston area, the Battle of San Jacinto. Big San Jacinto Monument. Just east of here. Jacinto. Jacinto. Jota. Well, yeah, I, I, I suppose so, but it's officially known as San Jacinto. Bell gets it out of the end zone. That was a 67-yard punt from Swayze Waters. It's been feast or famine for Swayze tonight. He had the bobble ball on a, a little bit of a high snap earlier, which resulted in Houston getting it inside the 10. He's had a 58-yard punt, a 67-yard punt. But how about Bryce Bell? The player nicknamed The Brick. That was his dad's nickname as well, and Bryce just kind of inherited that. Play fake to Bell on second down. Keenum looking long downfield. Edwards can't haul it in at the 45. Got to like what Houston's there, taking a shot off the play action early to try and move the ball down the field. The offensive line giving him some time. Case Keenum is a tremendous passer on the short and intermediate routes. And right there, a tremendous job on the deep ball. But Patrick Edwards couldn't come up with another big play and had a drop, which is what they were doing in the first half. Edwards is coming off that 11 catch, 146 yard day against East Carolina. Third and nine, pressure up the middle. Keenum finds Hafner, who leans forward for the first down. The contact was about a yard shy, but big Mark Hafner, the 6'3", 235-pound senior, leans forward to move the chains. Houston's offense is clicking. They're getting in a rhythm. They can take a little bit of breathing room. They moved out of the end zone. UAB is going to have to come up here and force a play to stay in this ballgame. Keenum finds a dragging Tyron Carrier. Carrier for a Houston first down out to midfield. I tell you what, watching this Blazer defense, they are whooped. And you see them right now, they're bringing in defensive substitutions. Guys are walking around, they're tired. They're physically tired, but I think they're also emotionally tired. There is no zip and no energy with this Blazer defense. Khan running on first down, case in point. Slipping out of tackles, he rumbles to the UAB 35. UAB defenders just bouncing right off of Andre Kahn. There is a flag on the play. Well, this is right about the time in the ball game, Carter, where guys start getting tired, and when you run the high-tempo offense like Houston does, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense, and it's late in the ball games where you really st start to see teams wear down. Taking a look at Joe Henderson, he's a player that runs sideline to sideline and does a good job, but he's been running around a lot the second half, as all the Blazers defenders have, because Houston is doing a good job of spreading it out throwing very short passes but getting a lot of yards after the catch illegal substitution defense penalty is declined first down every uab player that you see has hands on the hips during that pause in the action Play fake on first and ten. Keenum finding another receiver. This is Tim Monroe. And Aaron, you told us before we kicked this game off that when Houston's offense is firing on all cylinders, Keenum has spread the ball around. 14 different players have 
caught a ball this year for the Cougars, and you're seeing that in full effect here. He spreads it around better than anybody I've seen. They're doing a good job of doing that tonight and incorporating a lot of people right there. You see a great job. E.J. Smith catching the football and almost getting in for the touchdown. Now, Case Keenum going over 300 yards in this game. It's now seven straight games that Case Keenum has over 300 passing yards. This goes back to the Texas Bowl last year. As a freshman, he was splitting time with Blake Joseph. He has made the quarterback position his own. All six games now of 2008, 300 plus yards passing. And what was then a career high in the Texas Bowl. So seven straight games with 300 plus yards. Now, Houston's two and three, but as good as Keenum's playing, I'll tell you what, if it weren't for the two losses that they've had this year, you'd have to consider him for the Heisman. Excuse me, three losses that they've had. But you look at this UAB team, they are just worn out. There is life and spunk in this UH offense. But right now, looking across, guys have their hands on their hips. They're looking around saying, man, what's going on? What are we doing? Nobody knows. You can tell a lot by the body language of a player. I used to love coming to the line of scrimmage and seeing a player across from me with his hands on his hip and with the look of fear in his eyes. They had had it. This UAB defense looks worn out, but they still have a chance to come up with a huge play here. Keenum will walk into the end zone for a touchdown. There's a flag on the play. Face mask on the defense that will be assessed on the kickoff. Face mask, defense number 21. Touchdown is good. The penalty will be carried over to the kickoff. So Keenum into the end zone with a rushing touchdown, the nation's leader in total offense per game. In this contest, he has 372 yards of total offense, 360 through the air, only 12 on the ground, a modest number for Case Keenum, but he has a rushing touchdown to add to that total as well. And remember, Houston trailed this game 20 to 3 at the half. So it's a 42 point explosion in the second half for the Cougar offense. They're back at home on October 9th versus UAB, then at SMU, at Marshall, versus Tulane, versus Tulsa, versus UTEP, and then at Rice, the Bayou Bucket game against the Owls at the end of the year. But you could potentially rack up some wins against the next few opponents. There's no question they could, but it's going to be these November games against Tulsa and against Rice that everybody's going to be looking interested for because Houston has three losses, but they're 1-0 and undefeated in conference play, and I think this division just got a lot more interesting with the way the Cougars are playing in the second half, but they've got to take that next step, Carter, to grow and mature as a team, which means playing a full 60 minutes of football on both sides, and if they do that, then they can make big things very, very interesting down the stretch in Conference USA. Well, you circle November 15 there because the two offenses, Tulsa and Houston, going up against each other. I mean, a 99-yard touchdown drive. Remember, that drive started, I mean, it was 99.9 .9 yards on that drive. They were backed up with the nose of the football almost on the goal line where Keenum and the Cougars took over. I mean, you might as well talk about somebody's mama if you drive down the field and go 99 yards. I mean, there is nothing worse as a player and a defensive player to be able to have a team systematically march down the field. When you have 99 yards to go, it's almost a gimme. Very rarely will an offense go down the field. But that just goes to show you how well Houston has totally turned this thing around in the second half. And UAB is absolutely worn out. You know, and you, you put it... With all credit due to Houston, and obviously they've dominated the second half and taken command of this game, you kind of put an asterisk next to 
the Blazers, they're playing with 68 scholarships roughly right now. There, there's potential 85 in Division I-A football, but thanks to some losses in the APR, the uh, percentage, the graduation percentage rate that took place before Neil Calloway was the head coach at UAB. They had some scholarship reductions. So they're building back towards that. And Aaron, we, we had that discussion with Coach Calloway last week about how much they've improved the academic staff at UAB to get the players back on track academically. See Rashad Slaughter coming up limping. They would hate to be able to lose him. They've lost so many players this year, and a lot of times you'll see teams struggle because of lack of depth. There's been a lot of shuffling around, a lot of injuries on the offensive line, a lot of injuries at the defensive positions, a linebacker, and all over the field. And when you don't have depth, it's very hard to compete for the full 60 minutes. So a 17-point lead at the half has turned into a 25-point deficit. Joe Webb scrambling and throwing it away. It's time for the Bud Light stat six pack. Houston had all of 11 rushing yards in the first half. UAB owned all of these numbers in the first half. 534 now, the total offense for Houston in this game. They're averaging 545, fourth in the nation. I mean, it, it has been domination by. University of Houston here in the second half. Now here they are, third and 20. Webb pumps, throws, and incomplete. It's our dear friend Philip Hunt doing what he does best, which is hustling, getting after the quarterback. Didn't get there, but Joe Webb, no doubt, heard his footsteps. What a great job tonight by Philip Hunt. Snap, Swayze Waters gets the punt away. Bouncing at the 50. Houston being careless on the punt. Can't get that close. There's a flag on the play. Dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the kicking team, number 98, 15 yards, first down. Exactly what the Blazers did not want to see. A week after they had six personal fouls, 11 penalties against Memphis. You have to think that that would be frustration. Seen everything out of this Houston offense here in the second half. We've seen the flea flicker. We've seen five wide. We've seen a reverse. Just about everything but the Delaware wing tee here in the second half from the Cougar offense. Blake Joseph now the quarterback. Handing off to Bell on first down. Only two there for Bryce Bell. But boy, Bryce Bell has made some big plays here in this second half. He's done a great job, and now we get a chance to see Blake Joseph come in and see what he can do. You better be careful of Bryant Turner, the big defensive end, the big DE for the Blazers' defensive line. Joseph decides to scramble. Near another first down. Our direct TV player of the game is Bryce Bell. And he did it in both the rushing game and the passing game. He has 105 yards rushing, mostly on that 78-yard run. He also had a 70-yard pass play in the passing game on a catch and run. So he's our direct TV player of the game. He's been like a train tonight, just running and running and running and running. And 
interesting, doing some research for this game, I found out that the first railroad was actually formed in Delaware, oddly enough. Fourth down and short here. Leaning for the first down, the redshirt freshman Justin Johnson. So Houston keeps the football, a chance to run the football, run the clock. Well, the third quarter was dominated by Houston. How about the fourth quarter? I mean, you can't spell domination any other way than taking a look at those stats. UAB's offense was pathetic, and you have to give credit to Houston's defense as well. They came out and were much more aggressive, and that was the story of this ball game was how University of Houston responded in the second half. Coming up next, it's College Sports Tonight. Blake Joseph with a nifty grab. From Tyron Carrier, Richard freshman out of Houston Worth. Came to Houston to run track. Mentioned that he's a 200 meter runner. Reached the NCAA semifinals last spring. His great track program, which is produced among others, Carl and Carol Lewis. That was that same crossing route that we've seen several times tonight. Tyron Carrier having some huge plays early in the ball game on that same play. UAB just playing soft in defense, not wanting to get beat over the top and probably run this clock down so they can go home. You saw the fourth quarter yardage. The second half, it's 375 to 33. Wipe a few yards off there after the sack from Nick Davison on Blake Joseph. Must have been one heck of a halftime speech by Kevin Sumlin. I mean, his team was more abundant at the half down 20 to 3. Kind of a Washington cross the Delaware type of moment for Kevin Sumlin leadership. Leadership wise, getting his team ready to charge out of the gates in the third quarter. Third down and long. Joseph talks it. Well, Blake Joseph, who last year is a sophomore, split time with Case Keenum at quarterback. Art Bryles was then the head coach and offensive coordinator for the Cougars, and he split between Keenum and Joseph. But when Kevin Sumlin came in with Offensive coordinator Dana Holgerson, they said, we're going to make a judgment. We're going to make it early in fall camp. We're going to stick with it. So Keenum has become the quarterback, although Blake Joseph's being used all over the football field. Summit receiver. Some of the direct snap QB draw type plays, and now here he is at QB again. Has to get rid of that one with the blitzing Chase Daniel coming right at him. Let's take a look at the Wrangler five-star play of the game. Well, this is the play that turned the ball game around. Great job on the interception by Brinkley turning this ball game around. Then the sprinklers come on. If it wasn't bad enough that the Houston Cougars were putting the chill on the Blazer offense, they had to turn the water on them. And it's been downhill ever since as the Blazer offense has just come up wet. U of H has doused UAB here in the second half. Webb to dump off. Langford manages to snag it as he is ridden down by C.J. Cadmus, the rarely used junior out of Santa Fe, Texas. Tell you what, I've been impressed at times with what I've seen from UAB, but they're going to have to do something to ratify their inability to play for 60 minutes, just like Delaware ratified the Constitution back on December 7th, 1787. Institutional knowledge. Forrest picks up the first down. Seven Forrest in the reception. Joe Webb and the Blazers desperately trying to get something to get here offense and Side screen for Brantrell Moore is just a few yards on first down. Probably more for posterity sake than anything else.
Webb pumps, throws long. Slaughter holds it in. Rather, Carter holds it in. Tell you what, that front four of Houston did a great job of pressuring the passer this second half, and they were running around and putting pressure on Webb like I was putting pressure on that chicken dinner I had this morning at the Breakfast Club here in Houston. Folks, if you've never been to the Breakfast Club in Houston, make sure you get there. Grits, catfish. K-L-U-B, the spelling. K-L-U-B. Not, not to be confused with Molly Ringwald. And the yard bird. Those were some good blue hens, baby. Second down here, what could be the last play of the game? Webb throws it short, it's incomplete. Well, after a disappointing start for Houston, they, they opened up the season with the win over Southern University and then lost their next three. The mantra was, all right, it's conference play. It's time to start over. No matter leaving town for the hurricane and having our whole schedule tossed around, it's conference play now. They took care of business. A week ago Saturday, Greenville, North Carolina, knocking off the East Carolina Pirates. And even though they were down 20 to three at the half tonight, they have come back to dominate UAB in the second half. And it's going to be a Houston win, 45 to 20, over the UAB Blazers. The sprinkler has finally been turned off. Now, wait a second, UAB has taken a timeout with two seconds on the clock. Down by 25 points. Not what you would hope to see. I'm all about playing to the whistle, but. This, this may be a sprinkler timeout. <laughs> we, we didn't really like getting doused by the sprinkler. We're gonna take a timeout with two seconds to go. Well, Carter, do you think that Cougar head coach Kevin Sumlin is delightfully aware that he's got a good offensive football team on his hands. Well, Jim Jeffcoat's defensive bunch got it rolling in the second half. There's some of the coaching brain trust. Jason Phillips, a great wide receiver, and Dana Holgerson, now the offensive coordinator. They're officially co-offensive coordinators here at the University of Houston. One last play to the end zone, intercepted. Chance for a run back. Play into the whistle. That's a broken tackle. Lois Means is still on his feet. Finally, Lois Means dragged down at the 35. Final score, 45 to 20, Houston all over UAB. Remember, coming up next, college sports tonight. For the latest scores, news, highlights, and analysis, log on to cbssports.com slash cbscollege. For Aaron Taylor, producer Sellers Shy, director Chris Vincent, and our entire CBS College Sports crew, I'm Carter Blackburn, saying so long from Robertson Stadium in Houston, Texas. This has been a presentation of CBS College Sports the pulse of college sports. A second half storm by Houston. Wins it over UAB 45 to 20. Now we send you to New York for college sports tonight. It's a long season. There are Saturdays we steamroll our opponents. There are nights that'll make you cry. But it's worth every beat of sweat when you get the call to play in the bowl game. So for making our dreams become reality, we salute our bold partners. From New Orleans to St. Petersburg, to Houston to Fort Worth, to Memphis to Mobile, this is Conference USA. Competition lives here. These are the faces that look up to you. You, the fans, the people who pack the stands week after week. So before you walk through the stadium gates, or see the first fan from the other team, ask yourself one question. Are you setting a good example for the next generation? Make sportsmanship your best play of the game and make it a great day for NCAA football. 
never before has the gecko been captured on film talking about RV insurance. So, y you guys travel a lot. You should check out Geico and get a free rate quote on RV insurance. This is truly history in the making. You can also get a rate quote on motorcycle insurance, ATV insurance, personal watercraft insurance. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm up here. Geico, saving you money on insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. Get big arms, a rip chest, and cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. Now with free shipping. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of the push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. Call right now and you get free shipping. Get big fast. Call now for the perfect push-up. The NBA season is back. You can get it for less with the best deal in sports. NBA League Pass Early Bird Offer. Order by November 4th and save $20 off the regular season price. Don't miss a moment from your favorite teams wherever you live. And catch the best action from around the entire league every night. Get NBA League Pass from DirecTV. Now for just four payments of $42.25 each. To order and save $20, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com slash NBA. College sports tonight. So much football to get to alongside Greg Amsinger. I'm Kevin Dunn. Greg, let's get to it, man. I, I know. You know, this is my favorite part of the college football season. Some teams think they're on to great things. Other teams are just looking forward to basketball season. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? So, let's, so, speaking of basketball, let's start in the ACC. It seems like just yesterday when all the preseason college football prognosticators were saying Clemson is a national championship caliber club, and for good reason, Colin Harper. Fresh off a remarkable junior year where he threw for almost 3,000 yards, teamed with the amazing tailback tandem of James Davis and C.J. Spiller. This was an offense <laughs> nobody could stop except for Alabama, Maryland, and on Thursday, <laughs> Wake Forest. Let's take you to Winston-Salem for the highlights of this one. Really not many highlights, but we've got great editors and PAs. So they put something together for us. Riley Skinner, <laughs> that's deflected Butler Cresden there to save a touchdown. Wake had to settle for a field goal. Then C.J. Spiller injures his hamstring. He'd leave the game. He wouldn't come back. Only two carries, 10 yards, major loss. 15 seconds to go in the third. Colin Harper to Jacoby Ford over the middle. He's bobbling and he's in there. Or is he? Take a look at the replay. Everyone's saying, yeah, there's C.J. Spiller. Look, he, oh, he's bobbling. I, I think I got it. I think I got it. I do have it. I do have it. That's a touchdown. 7-3. Clemson. Colin Harper. That's how you answer. You give it right back. Alfonso Smith with a pick. Harper's sixth interception of the season. It would lead to a wake field goal to cut the, the lead to one. Then facing third and 24, Riley Skinner to DJ Bolden, who gets the first down. Oh, that was huge. Later in the drive, second and goal. Skinner back to Bolden in the flats. Anquan's younger brother, he's in. Two-point conversion would fail, but it didn't matter. Demon Deacon's defense rules. 12 to 7, the final score in this one. Colin Harper, 15 of 35, a buck 77 in that crucial interception. Riley Skinner. He was effective, 22 of 34, a buck 86 and a touchdown. Here's the stat, though. Clemson running the football, 23 carries for 21 yards as a team. Incredible. Now, who's ready for more defense? Florida A&M, very stingy against Winston-Salem State. Florida A&M up three here. Eddie Battle drops back, finding Adrian Smith at the one-yard line. To the very next play, Battle battles his way in. Rattlers go up 10-0. About three minutes left in the half. Same score. Curtis Pulley to Adrian Smith in the end zone. Rattlers up 17-zip. 
I want to see some defense. I, I, I kind of teased it. <laughs> Dropping back. Where Jared Dunson, you're going down. The Rattlers all over the place. Front four was amazing. 10.43 left in the game. Same score. Levante Page gets the handoff. He's in. Rattlers will go on to win this thing by a score of 23 nothing. Florida A&M has had, look at the time of possession in this game. Let me tell you, 40 minutes and 16 seconds compared to Winston-Salem State, who had 19 oh. minutes. Jared Dunstan, 5 and 16 for 34 yards. That defense was all over him. Adrian Smith, he was great. 10 catches, 101 yards, and a touchdown. When USC middle linebacker Ray Mawaluga went down with a knee injury in the loss at Oregon State, his chances of playing again for the Trojans were in serious doubt. The replay was even uglier and led to speculation that it was an ACL or MCL tear. Luckily with, for the Trojans, it was a sprain, but the senior was still sidelined until practicing Wednesday. And the good news for the fourth-ranked defense in the country, after Wednesday's practice, Pete Carroll said Ray Mawaluga is full go for Saturday's tussle with Arizona State. Carroll was impressed with how the 265-pounder chased down ball carriers and changed direction on his sore knee. It's looking like Mawaluga will not be chasing down Rudy Carpenter at the Coliseum. Dennis Erickson said Carpenter is very doubtful for the game against the Trojans. The senior has been hobbled by a left ankle injury that he hurt in the loss to Cal last week. Expect Danny Sullivan to get the start. Auburn assistant Steve Insminger, not Amsinger, Insminger, <laughs> will run the offense the rest of the season for Auburn. Tommy Tuberville fired OC Tony Franklin six games into his first season. Insminger had coaching stints at Texas A&M, Clemson, and Georgia. He will not be a candidate for the vacant position. Well, this is shaping up to be a great weekend in college football. Penn State will take their eighth-ranked defense and venture into Madison at night. And how about LSU at the Swamp? Enough said. Well, apparently not. Ricky Jean Francois talking trash has made this game even more heated than it usually is. And of course, the Red River shootout at the Cotton Bowl. The Horns and Sooners with everything at stake. This is really big to us. It's really big to Oklahoma. A great rivalry, everyone understands, everyone's talking about it, and uh, really exciting uh, atmosphere to compete in, and a great challenge playing a really good Texas team. They're outscoring people 103 to three in the first quarter. They've done it as well as anybody in the country. Now the stakes are even higher than just bragging rights. It's having a, you know, a, an inside track or one up on the other guy on your way to a championship, hopefully. I like the matchup. I think it'll be a lot of fun to go there and play. What makes this such a big game is the quality of personnel on both sides. As big as it gets, you know, this is, uh, you know, someone says is this a big rivalry, sure. And when you think of their offense, you think of Tim Tebow. I think he's becoming more well-rounded, understands the game more, and certainly a very competitive player. You play in the SEC, you play in classic matchups, and uh, you better enjoy this one. Be a little more smash mouth kind of football because Wisconsin's a tough football team and prides himself in their physical toughness. The expectations are high on this team and would like to be high uh, as long as I'm here. It's better to have high expectations than low expectations. It's up to us to go out there and play the best we know how to play and see which team is the better team, period. That's why we play. those games my little shocker Florida wins by 17 against LSU 17 too 17 much points. trash talking by a Ricky Jean Francois huh? don't make Superman Tebow <laughs> I know you love Superman let's not get on Superman that is all right? a bad move we're just getting warmed up on this edition of college sports tonight still so much more to come including a preview of the border war that is the Red River rivalry what's on the what's the vibe of both campuses for this game we'll show you and Cal is a quiet 4-1 so far Kev caught up with head coach Jeff Hedford Look we'll at that combo on Call Sports tonight. Switch your old dandruff shampoo to one that's clearly different. New Selsum Blue Naturals. Clearly stops flakes and itch. So soft. Clearly gentle with vitamins and botanicals. New Selsum Blue Naturals. The difference is clear. Have work to do? You need a truck. Step up to the best. It's GMC Truck Month. Get professional grade engineering. Power. Payload. 
and fuel efficiency. Like the Sierra 1500 with better available V8 fuel economy than Toyota Tundra. It's time to go to work. It's GMC Truck Month. Now get 0% APR financing or 5,000 purchase bonus cash on the 2008 GMC Sierra. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. Hey, what kind of light beer do you want? Uh, it doesn't matter, they're all the same. Whoa, all the same? Are they all as easy to drink as Bud Light? Isn't water from this hose easier to drink than water from this one? Isn't this bottle easier to drink from than this one? And wouldn't you agree that a raindrop is easier to drink than hail? Point is, there's a difference, and Bud Light has it. It's called drinkability. The just right taste that makes Bud Light so easy to drink. Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. Before I started college courses, I charted these courses. You see, we're on course, on track. Before I got my electronic business underway, I got these underway. Bridge, this is main control. The Navy got me the money I need for college and gave me an accelerated course to my business. Before I start my own practice out there, I'll get the practice I need here in the Navy. Navy, accelerate your life. College Sports Tonight is brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. A big-time jersey will be retired in Big D. Notre Dame football is becoming quite the steal for some in South Bend. One athletic department is about to see mo bad news, and a certain coach wants fans to stop imitating the water boy. Those are the stories I'm covering in this edition of News Notes and Quotes. Kansas head coach Mark Mangino will plead with Jayhawk fans to stop reciting a chant from the movie Water Boy. The Adam Sandler classic has a line referring to the opposing team's kick returner that isn't exactly nice. Mangino taped an online plea that will be replayed at KU's game on Saturday. <laughs> Southeast Missouri State Athletic Director Don Kaberman was fired, and men's basketball coach Scott Edgar was placed on administrative leave on Thursday. The moves come three months after the women's and men's basketball programs were placed on two years probation for violations in just one month since the SEMO football team lost to Mizzou 52 to 3. Just when Notre Dame's football team starts to improve, fans are leaving touchdown Jesus to find their cars have been broken into. According to area police like Sergeant Bill Redman, this problem is on the rise. Quote, I'm sure criminals know the Notre Dame football schedule better than some diehard Notre Dame fans do. End quote. Wow. SMU football legend Don Meredith left his number 17 jersey retired during halftime of the Mustangs game against Houston October 18th. Dandy Don was a two-time All-American and won two NFL championships for the Dallas Cowboys. In the 70s, Meredith teamed with Howard Cosell and Frank Gifford on Monday Night Football. Hope you enjoyed this edition of News, Notes, and Quotes. Since his days developing Trent Dilfer at Fresno State and Joey Harrington at Oregon, Jeff Tedford has had a reputation for bringing the best out of a quarterback. Tedford has two quarterbacks this year, and I asked him earlier during Kyle's off week if he felt the competition between his guys was healthy for the team. I think we're in a great situation to have two guys there that uh, are having a healthy competition and two guys that can go in and help us win. Uh, obviously, Nate, like you mentioned, has the experience. He's played a lot of games here. He's thrown for a lot of touchdowns, a lot of yards here, and uh, has provided a lot of great leadership for us. Kevin last year and even at the beginning of this year has done some good things. A little bit more mobile, uh, you know, can when the things break down, he can get out of there and make some things happen. And so we're pretty fortunate to have two guys, and it's probably going to take both of them for us to get where we need to be. Coach, Lavelle Hawkins, Deshaun Jackson, both those guys were part of a huge class. I remember when you brought that class in, Hawkins was a JC transfer, but they were some of the best receivers in the country. Talk about replacing those guys and, and kind of what direction you, you've gone to this year. Well, you know, we are. We're very young there, and, and we were fortunate to have some great players there last year. Um, this year, um, guys like Nyan Boateng, the transfer from Florida, is doing a fine job for us. Michael Calvin is a big six foot three guy that can really run. He's filling in for us as well. So, very inexperienced, but the difference is we have, we have great size and speed there. Before, we had very quick guys, but they were kind of small. You're looking at pretty much every one of our receivers now, six foot two to six foot four and can really run. So I'm really excited about how these guys are improving every single week, and I think they're going to be a great uh, group for us. Well, you're known for your passing and the receivers and quarterbacks we've talked about, but you've had a nice string of running backs there at Cal. Talk about Javid Best, what he brings to the table, and how he kind of fits in with some of the guys you've had before him. 
We have. You know, we've been really fortunate to have tandems of backs, be it J.J. Arrington and Marshawn Lynch or Marshawn Lynch and Justin Forsett. Now we have Javid Best and Shane Vereen. Uh, Javid is a guy who is an unbelievable talent, a uh, game breaker, uh, very, very fast. And, and same with Shane Vereen. Shane Vereen is much like him in that he's very strong inside. But when he gets in the open field, those guys can really do something with the football. Coach, defensively, uh, do you feel like you guys are, are where you want to be right now, or do you still have some uh, ways to go? Well, we're always looking to improve each and every week, but I'm really pleased on how Coach Gregor, our defensive coordinator and the defensive staff, uh, has put our players in a position to be successful. I think we've been pretty solid here early in, the, in this season. Uh, there's a lot of football to be played, so we just need to continue to develop, and I think we have, have, a, have an opportunity to be a pretty good defense. Coach, you're one of the best coaches in college football. We uh, really appreciated talking with you. Thanks, Coach Tadford. All right, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm sure Jeff Tedford appreciates the Houston Cougar offense. It's the second-best pass offense in the country, and Houston is confident after beating up on ECU 41-24. UAB comes in at 1-5, their only win against Alabama State. A game seen right here on CBS College Sports. UAB up 13-3, 25 seconds left in the first half. Joe Webb finds a wide open. Zach Langford lobs it up, 20-3 20, 20 Blazers at the half. Back from the Cougars, early third. Case Keenum, he's been great this year. Looking for Tyson Carrier on the crossing route. He has him. Can he get to the end zone? He's there, 14 yards for the score. Cougs down 20-10. UAB clinging to a three-point lead. Webb's pass is going to get tipped right there and picked by Brandon Brinkley. He's going to the house, 35 yards in style. Cougars take their first lead, 23-20. And as Houston lines up for the extra point, watch this. Uh-oh, the sideline springs a leak, cooling off the Blazers' sideline and also cooling off the fans. They were loving it. Finally, the local Cowboy was able to get a handle on the situation. I don't know what's going on there or what he's doing, but they were able to get it fixed. UAB's defense also sprung a leak. Keenum rolls out, going to hit Patrick Edwards, who takes it. 70 yards for the score. Picks up a block by 35. No angle there. Look at the block down the field. Great block. 31-20, Cougars take the lead, and they weren't done with big plays. Bryce Bell's going to get loose here. They can not only throw it second in the country, they can run it. Nice cutback, open field, takes it all the way to the two-yard line. He would score two plays later. Watch that cut right there. He does get caught on the two. He's going to get the uh, dessert, though, as he gets in two plays later. Houston gets the win, 45-20. to They come back to win. Another tough loss for the Blazers. Keenum was great. 360 yards, two touchdowns. Bell gave them some good yards on the ground. All right, so one Texas team won with the Houston Cougars. Does that mean another Texas team will win in the Lone Star State on Saturday? After the break, much more on the Red River rivalry. Our cameras were in Austin to find out what the preparations like for this monstrous matchup against the top-ranked Sooners. You want to see that. And, and what did Brian Jones and Trev Albers have to say about Notre Dame versus Carolina? Find out next. Let's go take them out, yeah? Yeah. We got business to handle. Hey, can I, can I get a Whopper Junior, please? This is, this is not Burger King. That's a Burger King, sorry. Can I get some flame broiled beef, please? Got any of that? Uh, we don't do that here. Do you want a sour cream and chocolate potato? A baked potato? A baked potato? Are we in Russia? Whopper Junior and Spicy Chicken Crisp for a buck each, taking down other value menus. Tell Wendy Whopper Junior is looking for, okay? I. Now, in huge biceps and massive shoulders, get the V cut. A small little waist and a big upper body with the perfect pull up. From the U.S. Navy SEAL inventor of the perfect push up, the perfect pull up changes the pull up bar into a complete upper body machine with two design advances. The perfect pull up's handles rotate with the natural movement of your arms and shoulders. And the perfect pull up is the first pull up bar with an adjustable swing arm. Start with a bicep burning standing row. Rip your shoulders and back with an Australia pull up. Electrify your arms and upper body with rotational pull-ups. It's three exercises in one invention. It changes the game and gets you results. So here's the deal. Try the perfect pull-up for 30 days for only the cost of shipping and handling. You pay only $14.95. When you order, you'll receive the perfect pull-up adjustable bar and two rotating handles. You'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired workout chart. And when you call, ask about the perfect pull-up ab straps for an off-the-floor ab workout the way the pros do it. Get ripped by the perfect pull-up. Moving day is here, the most dreaded of days. Packing, unpacking, your mind in a haze. DirecTV knows how stressful moving can be, so we make keeping your entertainment both easy and free. For uninterrupted service of the shows you like best, 
Just leave the dish behind and we'll handle the rest. Simply dial 877-616-MOVE and we'll throw in three months of HBO Stars and Showtime for free. Watch live games online featuring big time teams with CBS College Sports XXL. Log on Saturday for Conference USA football as the high scoring offense of Tulsa takes on SMU. UTEP plays Tulane and much more. Get more action at cbsports.com slash XXL. Well, welcome back to College Sports. Greg and I thought you were going to get a break. Greg, I actually thought you were going to get a break from BJ and Trev, but yeah. apparently they're back in the show. They are back in the show, but the thing is they've kind of grown before our very eyes. Yes, they have. They don't need me anymore. They're talking about some games you may not be thinking of. They're not the big-time Red River rivalry. Here you have Trev Alberts with BJ Plain Host. Guys. All right, guys, thank you. Trev, let's talk about three interesting games. Could be pretty interesting. Let's start with Notre Dame versus UNC. Uh up-and-coming North Carolina football team. They really are, BJ. You know, you look at this Notre Dame team. Here's a team that's really looking for their first quality road win of the season. They don't have a road win. They played Michigan State and lost that game. But the difference with Notre Dame right now, this is a team with only one loss. The difference is they're not turning the ball over. They've had zero turnovers in the last nine quarters, and that's why Jimmy Clausen's had 12 touchdowns and only six interceptions. I think it's a terrific game. Notre Dame with an opportunity to go on the road and play what I think and you think is a pretty good North Carolina team. I really like this North Carolina football team. Let me tell you, they gave one away against Virginia Tech, and they've got to be kicking themselves, although they've won two ball games since then, and they've had quarterback issues as well. You know, coming into the season, it was T.J. Yates. He goes down in that Vitek game. Mike Paulus, he comes in, throws a couple picks, doesn't play well, but he does get the start the next week versus Miami. He goes one for four. They get him out of the way, and they bring in Cameron Sexton. Cameron Sexton, a young man, had not a lot of time under the center, so he had some problems with pass rush early in spring, but he has played exceptionally well, got two touchdown passes, or had two touchdown passes at Miami victory. They beat UConn, undefeated team, last weekend. I like UNC in that ball game. Let's go to the next ball game, a team that's been very disappointing, mm. Arizona State at USC. You know, Arizona State has to be one of the more disappointing teams in all of college football. I mean, here's a team coming. I thought that the, the running game was going to be a strength for them. Well, they're last in the Pac-10 in rushing offense right now. They're last in the Pac-10 in third down offense. And now Rudy Carpenter is banged up. Don't know how he's going to play. And now you're playing against a USC team that I think one of the more statement wins last week, the best statement win in all of college football was the way they came back after that debacle in Corvallis and dominated what I thought was a pretty good Oregon team. I think that USC clearly is the better team. If they show up ready to play, they handle Arizona State pretty easily. Well, you look at A-State, their defense, they're not great, but they're not really that bad. I mean, it ranked like 42nd in the nation right now, a total defense. But the problem has been the running game. Last year, they had Ryan Terrain back there along with Keegan Herring. Herring is still there. You got Dimitri Nance. They're only picking up a poultry. 85 yards per game rushing. That's horrible. You're not going to win football games if you can't rush the ball, especially going up against USC. I think USC gets that victory. Our last ball game. Uh-oh, Trey. You what? ready for this? Your Nebraska Cornhuskers heading to my hometown, L.A., Lubbock area, the hub city, to take on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. This could be ugly. Well, we'll have to see. I think Nebraska obviously trying to rebound. Uh, that game against uh, Missouri was ugly. I mean, it was 52 to 10, 52 17, <laughs> but it was a you know last minute play there, last second play when Nebraska scored. But I think the bottom line with Nebraska is this: I mean, they still have a ways to go defensively. They yeah. tried some different things against Missouri. Clearly, it didn't work. Um, I, I think offensively, until Nebraska understands the importance of learning how to be physical not just talking about being yeah. physical. You know how it is. Texas used to talk physical. It wasn't until this year they started actually playing physical. Mm -hmm. Nebraska is simply not a physical team. They can't run the football consistently, and until they do that, they're going to really struggle going on the road and playing a team like Texas Tech, who's got it clicking on all cylinders. Graham Harrell had six touchdowns, yeah. 454 yards pass against K-State. Yep. Now, I, I look at this ball game. the first thing that comes to mind is last year's game, Kansas versus Nebraska. You remember that score? Yeah, 76 was, yeah. to 30. I'm sorry, I had to bring that up. But that's what I see. I have visions of, like, sevens, a lot of them, mm. in the score. And they're not going to well, be on that Nebraska side. you get seven side. every time you score. And kick <laughs> well, it I think it's going to be a lot of those sevens. It's going to be like Vegas. ka -ching. I mean, how do you stop this offense? You just missed it. Graham Harrell, the numbers he's putting up. Everyone knows about Crabtree. They only lost one guy off the offense, and that was a... Amendola, the receiver, so I like Tech's offense. They're running the ball a little bit with Shannon Woods. Defense is playing somewhat better, so I, I like them in this ballgame. I, I agree. Nebraska still has a little ways to go. All right, enough of your corn huskers. Let's have some quick picks here. LSU, Florida. LSU, easy. I think their defense is too good. Florida, no identity. I like LSU. Florida has an identity. They ain't won a national title with the same offense. Come on. Penn State, Wisconsin. Uh, Penn State, Wisconsin reeling. Three straight losses. Mm, yeah, they gave one up to the Buckeyes last week. I like Penn State as well. 
All right, Texas, Oklahoma. Come on, it's, I know it's, what you're going to pick. You know Come what, on. it's a tough game, but Oklahoma is. is the better team, the more balanced. Texas will never beat an Oklahoma team when their quarterbacks are leading rusher. Hey, listen here, buddy. Texas will get the victory. It's a rivalry game. Anything can happen. All right, that's it. If you want more in-depth information on college football, all you have to do is tune in on Wednesdays Inside College Football, brought to you by Pontiac. Thanks, guys. The most anticipated game everywhere in Norman and Austin every year is the Red River rivalry. When both teams are down, it's still big. But this year, that's not really a problem. These two schools and these two states flat out don't like each other. The Sooners have had the Longhorns number lately. We head to Austin to find out the horn strategy. I'm going to tell you the truth. What comes to my mind is two teams out there trying to eat. That's what I like to say. Both teams eating, man. Both teams out there bringing their A games. We know we know all you going to come out there fired up, and uh, we're going to come out there fired up as well. And, uh, you know, I respect that team. But, you know, we're going to go out there and play Texas football, what we're capable of doing. Now, they got a great offensive line. The quarterback look, looks real good. Uh, they got some good receivers. Uh, they got a great-looking team. Uh, we're just looking forward to it. It's a challenge. And the good thing about it is this defense really likes uh, challenges. Going into that game, I guess my freshman year, I didn't – and even coming here at the University of Texas, I didn't know too much about it. I just knew that every October that's who played. And walking down that tunnel is just a rush of adrenaline, to be honest with you, man, just to – to be a part of the, that atmosphere and get get to play that game is great, you know. And just hope that we come out with a victory on Saturday. Night. To go in this game, very focused, a great game plan, execute everything that the coaches put on the table, I feel like we can really get the job done. And, uh, you know, being a team like all you is paid a tribute to how much work we've been putting throughout this whole season. Greg, I can't wait for this one. It's going to be closer than people expect. Sooners could win by only 21. Okay, okay, we'll see what happens. Up next on College Sports Tonight, Greg is going to sit down with Wisconsin coach Bo Ryan to talk some hoops. Plus, Vandy is off to their best start since the 40s, but Phil still thinks the ride could end in Starkville. Lithium, the world's longest lasting double-A battery and high-tech devices. Energizer, keep going. Do you have what it takes? Visit cbsintramurals.com slash Powerade for pictures, videos, and game highlights to see what's happening on your intramural field. Time for some men's basketball. Wisconsin was so good last year, 31 and five. A Big Ten championship, only two conference losses. This team is based around one thing. You see at the bottom of your screen that 54.4, that is opponents' points per game. This team plays defense as good as any program in college basketball. They are tremendous. We'll see if they can duplicate that performance this season. We're almost one week away, believe it or not, from Midnight Madness, or it's being called in Madison, Wisconsin, the Night of the Grateful Red. Who came up with that title? Let's welcome head coach Bo Ryan to the broadcast to find out. Bo, great to see you again. And is Night of the Grateful Red your creation? Well, it's a creation of uh, an assistant coach that I had who's actually now the head coach at North Dakota State. So um, I I'll give him all the credit for naming our fan section, our student fan section, the Grateful Red. And they, of course, do the tie-dye shirt. So we... We have a, a performance or two planned for our students and for the people that come that night. Well, you get credit for creating a winner in Madison, Bo. 30 wins in each of the last two seasons. Is that the bar now? Do you really expect 30 win seasons every year? Well, I don't know about those type of expectations. All I expect is that my guys work hard, and take care of the ball, and play good defense. I think uh, if you can do those things, you got a chance. Well, your team clearly works hard, even when the season's not in session. There's a classic picture right now on your team's website showing your players huffing and puffing up what looks like a brutally steep hill. Did your guys do something bad? Are they being punished, Bo? Or is this normal preseason conditioning? No, I think they knew they were going to have their picture taken, so they looked like they were tired. <laughs> uh, I, I actually think they were cruising during that time. No, we, have a, we do have a tough uh, preseason workout schedule, and our, all our guys, all our teams in the past have been able to handle it, so I'm sure this group will do the same. But, yeah, the, the hill running has been a part of, uh, 
of everything that I've done as a head coach uh, since I went to Platteville in 1984. You run with the team, Bo. Do you run uh, with the do team? Do I run with the team? Yeah. Uh, I, go up, I go up one time, I stay at the top, and they have to run to me. How's that sound? <laughs> <Pretty good? laughs> Sounds perfect. Now, one guy you don't get to watch run up hills anymore is Brian Butch, your leading scorer and rebounder from a year ago. He's out of eligibility. How confident are you his production will be replaced? Well, I'm hoping that uh, it might not be by one guy, but it might be by a couple. And that's, that's what we had to do the year before when we lost uh, Lando Tucker and Cam Taylor. They had scored a lot of points, and it took four or five guys to replace those points as individuals. So I think uh, what's going to have to happen this year, the contributions of Brian Butch, Greg Steamsman, Michael Flowers, for example, uh, it, it might have to come from five guys rather than those three. But we're, we're hoping it comes from somewhere. Now, when we mentioned Brian Butch as your team's leading scorer from a year ago, he only averaged 12 points per game. Orlando Tucker, the exception really when he looks at your, the history of your program during his playing days, but your system is not based around running the floor and scoring 80 points per game. How are you able to get so much talent with an offensive scheme that doesn't exactly let kids show off like other programs out there? Well, you haven't been looking at our games. We try to fast break, but the problem is the other team gets back and plays defense, so that's a problem, Greg. Uh, it's um, we're not we're not holding the ball, believe me. But we get, but we we try to get good shots. So if we can get something in transition, we're certainly going to do that. Um, but take a look at the points team score against us. We we get back pretty well defensively, and we do some things to to keep teams from getting good shots. And the other teams are trying to do the same to us. So. We're going we're gonna to try to get out and get some easy ones, but they're tough to get. All right, Bo, I want to finish with a few quick hitters. Short questions, short answers, really get to know you a little bit more. Name the toughest okay. arena in the Big Ten to play in. Uh, do I have time to name ten? <laughs> or I can only name one? <laughs> I think that could be an answer uh, there. <laughs> if you and your entire coaching staff became ill for some reason, which player would you name? to be your team's player coach for a game? I think Joe Krabinoff would be that guy this year. Um, he's, uh, he's that kind of guy. I, I think because, number one, they're going to listen to him. And we have some other guys people listen to, Marcus Landry. Uh, but I, I think Joe Krabinoff would do a great job. All right, finally, the and, best. And if, and, if not, and if not, he'd take them back in the locker room. <laughs> good, good. Finally, the best coaching advice you've received from Kelly Ryan, your wife. Uh, keep your day job. <laughs> Best thing I can think of. <laughs> I love it. Wisconsin men's basketball coach Bo Ryan. Great stuff. We'll talk soon, okay? All right. Thanks, Greg. All right. It's obvious Bo knows basketball. After the break, you'll learn what Phil knows about football. Kevin talks individual superstars with an individual who has super knowledge and all the stars. Phil steals next on College Sports Tonight. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. to go pro in something other than sports.
Let's take a look at Phil Steele's picks last week. Adam Weber was good. I'm going to give Phil four wins here. I think Adam Weber was definitely a win. 274 yards. Khalil Bell, not a lot of yards, but two touchdowns, and they got a victory over Washington State. Good day for Bell. Dillard and the Auburn defense were great. They both lost Rice and Auburn, but the defense was not the problem for the Tigers, and Jared Dillard was certainly not the problem for the Rice Owls. And once again, we are happy to be able to talk to football expert Phil Steele. Phil, thanks for joining us again. Hey, always a pleasure being on, Kevin. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quickly. Was there anything that stood out there, one game that you really, or one pick that you really liked last week? Well, I'd have to go with the Jared Diller of Rice. Uh, averaging 20.3 yards per catch, uh, I thought he had a very good week, and it probably could have been more had Rice not gotten down so big. No, no doubt. They got down really big and lost that game 63-28. Let's go ahead and fast forward to this week. Is there a quarterback out there that you're eyeing to have a big day? You know, Kevin, I could tell you Sam Bradford's going to throw for over 300 yards against Texas, hmm. but he, he's averaging 333 yards per game. Or right. Graham Harrell's going to throw for 425 against Nebraska. He's averaging 405. So those wouldn't be big-time picks. But here I'm going to take a look at a quarterback in C.J. Bechet of Northwestern. He's averaging just 208 yards per game. He's 10th in the Big Ten in pass efficiency, and he's taken on a 5-1 and one Michigan State defense that's allowing just 217 yards per game passing. Now, Michigan State really hasn't taken on any quality quarterbacks yet, and here they take on a Northwestern team that's fresh off a of bye and at full health. Last year, C.J. carved up the Spartan secondary for 528 yards and five touchdowns. He's not going to throw that much this year because Terrell Sutton, Sutton is healthy, but with the fact Sutton's healthy, they won't be able to key on Bechet. I look for him to have a season-high passing game against the number 23 Spartans. Mm, good call there. Phil, let's go to a breakout running back. Now, we know Tony Franklin was fired from Auburn. You think the lack of the spread offense is going to help out an Auburn running back, don't you? Yeah, they're still going to run the spread, but it's probably going to be more run-oriented. And you look at Ben Tate. This guy comes in averaging just 83.5 yards per game rushing, but he's taken on an Arkansas defense that in two SEC games has yielded 303 yards per game and 8.3 yards per carry. Now his backup, Lester, is not 100% healthy, so I look for Tate to get the bulk of the carries here and have a big game. And also keep your eyes on Oregon State running back, Shaquiz Rogers, who uh, should have a big game against the Washington State rush D. You nailed Jared Diller last week. He had a big day, even though they did lose to Tulsa. Which receiver is really going to be an impact guy this Saturday? Once again, I'm picking on a team that's undefeated here, Oklahoma State, and I'm going to go with Jeremy Macklin of Missouri. Now, Missouri's going to have to score points to stay ahead of Oklahoma State's outstanding offense. Macklin's only number 17 in the NCAA in receiving yards per game. In fact, he's number two on his own team in receptions, the tight end Chase Kaufman. But here in a game that they're going to have to put up points, even against an Oklahoma State defense that's number four in the Big 12 in pass efficiency, I look for Macklin to have a big game receiving and also make some exciting kick returns as well. Phil, Georgia, got, they got gashed by Alabama a couple weeks ago. Why do you think the Georgia defense is going to be so good this weekend? Yeah, you know, last year, Tennessee had 401 yards against Georgia, 35 points. Georgia gave up 41 to Alabama. But actually, those two factors have me very high on Georgia. They've got a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. They'll be flying around the football from the first whistle to the last. They're off a bye, off a loss, playing with revenge versus last year's SEC East champions. And keep in mind, USC was in the same situation last week, taking on an explosive Oregon team that was, and uh, USC was off a loss at, at home, off a bye versus a team that beat them last year. They held the Ducks to 10 points. I look for similar results out of Georgia. Phil, give us an upset special. How about a 1-4 and four team to knock off the number 13 team in the country? I'm going to go with Mississippi State over Vanderbilt. Now, Vanderbilt's playing in some rarefied air here. They're up to number 13 in the polls. Everybody's slapping them on the back, telling them how great they are if their national TV win last week. They're 5-0, and oh, but they've actually been outgained by 50 yards per game. Wow. Mississippi State's 1-4. and four. They've only been outgained by 20 yards per game. And if you follow the SEC, you see that most teams that play that A-plus game on national TV, they struggle the next week. This is the first time Vanderbilt's been favored in an SEC game this year. Mississippi State, not only one in four and desperate, but they're fresh off a of bye. And last year, they knocked off Auburn, number 14 Kentucky, number 21 Alabama, and two of those were on the road. I'll call for this one in four team to knock off the number 13 team in the country. Go with Mississippi State. Phil, that's why we love you. 5-0, and 1-4, oh, and four, but the numbers you gave there really could tell the story. Thank you so much. We can't wait to talk to you again next week. Still much more football left on College Sports tonight. Recruiting expert Tom Lemming will break down the top college freshmen and how they fared at the next level. The Trojans know what little frost Jack Quiz Rogers can do. Who else is shining their first year?
Let's go take him out, yeah? Yeah. We got business to handle. Hey, can I can I get a Whopper Junior, please? This is, this is not Burger King. That's a Burger King, sorry. Can I get some flame broiled beef, please? Got any of that? Uh, we don't do that here. Do you want a sour cream and chocolate potato? A baked potato? A baked potato? Are we in Russia? Whopper Junior and spicy chicken crisp for a buck each. Taking down other value menus. Tell Wendy Whopper Junior's looking for, okay? All right. Search Pontiac G8 reviews online and see why it's getting a bit of a reputation. The Pontiac G8 GT, the most powerful sedan for the money. Now use your purchase bonus cash and get a G8 sedan starting at $26,595. Offer ends November 3rd. See your Buick Pontiac GMC dealer today. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. Oh, the freshman impact. So many good young players making their presence felt on the Division I level. Michael Floyd has been great all year for Charlie Weiss. Another receiver, DeAndre Brown. He's 6'6", a frosh at Southern Miss. You can watch DeAndre play this weekend against Boise State on CBS College Sports. And look at Jacquez Rogers. Another great game from this young man. Again, he single-handedly beat USC just a couple weeks ago. Welcome back to College Sports Tonight. It's Greg Amslinger alongside our recruiting expert from the world-famous Max Preps Lemon Report. Yes, I'm joined by the one and only Tom Lemming. All right, so we talked about Jacquez Rogers. We talked about him earlier. A surprise, really, on the scene. You didn't really see him coming. Let's talk about some freshman tailbacks making their presence felt. Start with Jacquez Rogers. Is it because of his stature, 5'6", that you didn't talk about? Without him? a doubt. Um, he was in my magazine, and he broke a lot of rushing records for the state of Texas. That should have, you know, I'm not as bright as I appear to be. Stop. <laughs> and Stop. I should have known, because I made the same mistake of Barry Sanders. This guy can play the game. He broke a lot of rushing records. He's got great wiggle to him. You see him, he's very tough to bring down despite his lack of size. And he's one of those backs that could just keep piling up the yards, even though you don't really expect it from a 5'7 uh, tailback. Is he this year's Michael Crabtree? Because remember, Michael Crabtree, although he was a redshirt freshman last year, you didn't really see him coming out of high school either. And he was the, the breakout freshman, wasn't he? Well, he have to be. he'd have to be this year's Crabtree at the running back position. And you're always going to make that mistake with a 5'7 running back. But he made a smart move going to Oregon State because if he had stayed A&M or Texas, if they had gone after him, he would have been behind some other backs that would have been given the shot first because of their size. Now, a great story going on in Boulder. A young man named Rodney Stewart. He's 5'6", five, 5'7", five, another tiny guy who is outplaying Daryl Scott, who was the number one freshman running back in the country. Rodney Stewart's also a freshman. What is the story with this young man? Well, Greg, that's why they play the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, stick to the cliche, my friend. Especially when I'm making so many mistakes like this. You know, Daryl, I can't believe it. You know, Daryl Scott was supposed to be the end all. Everybody, Texas was trying to uh, go, you know, going crazy trying to get him. Comes to Colorado, he's getting beat up by a five foot six running back. So Daryl Scott might need a psychiatrist before the year's over. <laughs> he has 376 yards rushing right now, and he was the reason Colorado was able to beat West Virginia at home earlier this season. We move on to another guy, a guy you did see coming, Cyrus Gray. He's at uh, uh, Texas A&M, but he's not really pouring on the yards, 139 yards rushing. Do you eventually see him to be the star of that program? Oh, without a doubt. You know, he's a he's a good size running back, but he's got a lot of wiggle to him. He's smart. He's very good out in space when he gets out in space. And he can run a 4 3 8 40. Four, three, he was eight. from DeSoto, Texas last year. I went down to see him, and I was really surprised because there were a lot of good running backs in the state of Texas last year. Texas got there. Oklahoma got two very good ones. But he was sort of caught in between, and then at the end of the year, he really exploded and had a very good senior year, and a lot of people came after him. AM was lucky enough to get him, and I think by the end of his career, he's going to be breaking a lot of records. As the Aggies struggle this season with Mike Sherman in his first year as the head coach, chances are he's going to see the field more and more. Yeah. Same thing happening for Sam McGuffey up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. McGuffey had a breakout game, I think, week two, and he's been pretty good so far, over 300 yards rushing. 
Well, how would you evaluate the way he's being used so far by Rich Rodriguez? Uh, perfectly, because Sam McGuffey is not a powerhouse of a back. He's a kind running between the tackles. He could get hurt. But he's still not big enough. He needs to put on another 15, 20 pounds of muscle, which would come with time. But he's one of the most exciting backs in the country. Look at those spin moves. He's got great 4-3 speed, and he's perfect for the spread offense. Could you get him the ball out in space? He could create a lot of damage, and he's a human highlight film. So perfect. They're using him perfectly right now. He's not going to get hurt. He's carrying the ball maybe five to ten times a game. Do you expect him to be like a legend by the time it's all said and done and over at Big Blue? Do you think he's going to be one of the great ones? He has, that, he has that kind of potential. If you remember last year with the little somersault and everything else, we had him down in San Antonio, and he was fun to watch because he was jumping over uh, players' heads with a standing jump. No, so he literally got, hurtled got players on yeah. his highlight film. It was ridiculous. Jason Ford at Illinois. Let's stay in the Big Ten, wrap up our discussion on freshman tailbacks making an impact. He's really not making the kind of impact we expected, is Jason? No, not at all. I saw Jason down as a sophomore at Tennessee at an Adidas camp. Then I saw him as a junior out of uh, Southern Illinois. And I really liked him a lot. And I thought with Richard Mendenhall leaving for the pros with the Steelers, that he was going to come in and really make a big name for himself now. Unfortunately for him, Illinois has got a couple of sophomore running backs to train for in particular. That's a really really doing the job and Jason just hasn't had uh, enough opportunity to show what he can do but he's really strong in the legs he's a powerful back with very good speed and vision when he's given the chance that if he can carry the ball 20 to 30 times a game he'll become a workhorse and you're right now just 10 yards rushing for four now let's give Tom the opportunity for him to show you what he can do that's tomorrow night on his show Max Preps Lemon Report I get the opportunity to join him there it's a big show tomorrow you're going to want to join us at 7 30 Eastern Tom's going to unveil his top 10 wide receivers for the class of 2000 2009, and we will also talk to the man who's at the top of the list. That is Friday at 7.30 Eastern on CBS College Sports. Sticking with high school, now it's time for some burgers. The Burger King breakout player of the week is Carson Meager. Carson Meager is a 6-foot, 180-pound senior from Plano near the Dallas area. The Wildcats have won seven titles. They're a power in the state of Texas. Carson's a power for Plano. 19 of 31 last week, 293 yards and three touchdowns. Burger King congratulates Carson and all of those players who come through when it counts. We have more college sports tonight and more high school stars still to come. Up next, we'll show some of the best high school players in the nation in action. Who's the next college star? Stick around to find out. I have senior moments, but my skin shouldn't. New Gold Bond Ultimate Restoring Lotion. Seven moisturizers, three vitamins, plus CoQ10 to help skin renew itself. Can your lotion do that? Gold Bond Ultimate Restoring. This stuff really works. Get big arms, a ripped chest, and cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. Now with free shipping. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of the push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. Call right now, and you get free shipping. Get big fast. Call now for the perfect push-up. Okay, give me my get remote. Get it, Jim. You had way too much cable. Uh, you said you were going to get DirecTV. I'm fine. Really. So digital picture doesn't mean anything to you? But what about your friends and your family? I just want to watch the game. That's the cable talking, Jim. That game isn't even in HD. Friends don't let friends watch cable. Refer a friend or family member to DirecTV, and you'll get $50, and they'll get $50 on top of our best offer. College Sports Tonight has been brought to you by Miller High Life. Good honest beer at a tasty price. That's ice cold common sense. One of the best rivalries in all of sports will take place in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl, Texas versus Oklahoma. Not like breaking news, but you know me. Why in the world would I make that my Miller rivalry of the week? That's too easy. Way too easy. Forget the Red River rivalry and for a moment, 
switch divisions with me. This weekend, Wisconsin Whitewater will hit the road to play bitter rival Wisconsin Wa River Falls. Like the Texas Oklahoma game, this classic has been lopsided lately. Remember, the Sooners have won six of the last eight, while Whitewater has won six straight against the Falcons. Like the Texas Oklahoma game, alumni go crazy for this thing. Wisconsin Whitewater is fresh off a record crowd last week, so many expect. Whitewater's crazy following to make the trip to Raymer Field for an even bigger audience this week. Like the Texas Oklahoma game, these two schools, they don't like each other, and neither do the fans. And like the Texas Oklahoma game, local legends are made in this annual battle. Fans will always remember what Adrian Peterson did to the Horns as a true freshman, and, and what Whitewater's running back Justin Beaver did just last year against River Falls. That guy's a legend. No matter which rivalry you want to see, games like these remind us why college football makes us forget about our careers, the, uh, the lawn, or even the economy. At the end of the day, sports fans from every division across the nation need an ice-cold, common-sense rivalry. Ron Zook has Illinois football cool again. The Illini's recruiting has been off the charts since the Zucker showed up. Regis Ben, Juice Williams, and Martez Wilson were huge recruits. The next big stud for Illinois could be Rockhurst standout Nathan Shieldhaus. The prep star in the Hawklets taking on Minnetonka. There is the Illinois commit Shieldhaus. First quarter, no score. Guess who's going to take it? It will be Nathan himself going up the gut. He has stopped at the one-yard line. He would score on the next play on a quarterback sneak. 7-0 Hawklets. He was not done. This time he keeps it on the option, stretches it out, makes his one look easy. Gets to the pylon, seven-yard touchdown, 14-0. Brockhurst leading. This time he's going to show off his arm. Let's this one fly to Keith Langtry. Nice spin move by Langtry. Uses his blockers and his vision. 61-yard touchdown. Hawk, let's go up 28-0. They go on to win 38-7. North Allegheny at Pine Richland. Art Walker and his Tigers taking on the Rams for the first time in 42 years. 8-15 left in the first half. Eric Cordenbrock's going to roll out. Watch this arm. Looking for Steve Valenza. He sees him. Woo! That's a rope right there. Gets it down there. That's a uh, touchdown, huge touchdown. Rams go up 10-7. Future Maryland Turf Ryan Schlieper makes a great block, helping Alex Papson get into the end zone. Tigers go up 20-17. to Seconds left in the game now. Pine Richland down three. Corden Brock's going to hand off to Mitch Elliott. Elliott's going to go in in style. Take a look, another look at this one. Like Priest Holmes up over the top. Rams win this one 24 to 20. Highlands and Chaparral. Colorado commit Jack Harris looking to pave a way to a, a win uh, for Chaparral. He does a great job early in the first, making a hole for Jerry Slota on the keeper. Wolverines up 7 0 early. Early second quarter now, Chaparral up 7 to 3. Harris blows open another huge hole. Great, great spin move by David Zimmerman, but the hole was there. 14 to 3, Wolverines. Fourth quarter now, Chaparral up 14 10 at Slota again, and guess who he's following. He's following his big boy, Jack Harris, fighting his way in. Wolverines win this one 21 to 10. And Greg and I will be right back to wrap up college sports tonight.